Welcome to Daytona. We're ready. We've been ready for 10 days for the biggest and first race of the 2020 NASCAR Cup season, the 62nd Daytona 500. Rookie or veteran, no matter how long you've been coming to this event, there are butterflies. There have to be. Jeff Gordon has won this thing three times, and I'll bet even you're just a little nervous right now. Well, we've got some rookies in the field today. I'm sure those butterflies are going crazy right now. But even the veterans, I mean, this is there's nothing like the buildup, the amount of hard work that goes in to preparing for the Daytona 500, the biggest race of your career, the, one of the biggest races in the world. I guarantee you there's a lot of butterflies. But we got 500 miles to decide the winner of this race. All right, we'll take you through it. Three stages of racing in the biggest event of the year. Let's begin with our starting lineup, Ricky Stenhouse, an aggressive two-time Super Speedway winner, and Alex Bowman, third straight 500. He'll be on the front row. Row two, Joey Logano, who won his dual race here Thursday, and William Byron, who did as well. They earned the second row spots. Then it'll be Eric Almirola, who has two cup wins, and Jimmy Johnson beginning his final full season in NASCAR. Ryan Newman, a former winner of the Daytona 500, and Kyle Larson, who ran out of gas leading in 2017. And in row five, Brad Keselowski, yet to win the Daytona 500 in 10 attempts. And you just heard me say, my pick for the day, Kevin Harvick, 2007 Daytona 500 champion. Bubba Wallace, runner-up two years ago, and Cole Custer, one of six rookies in the field. Austin Dillon, the 2018 winner, and Eric Jones, who won the clash here last weekend. Row eight, starting 15th, Mark Truex Jr., oh, so close to 2016. Watch for him to be a real threat today, and alongside him, Matt DiBenedetto led the most laps last year in the 500. Now with an, a team, the Wood Brothers, who are the last to have an underdog win this race. Christopher Bell, one of the big three from the Xfinity Series moving to Cup this year, and 2017 winner Kurt Busch. Chris Busher returns to Ford and to Roush Racing this season, and Ross Chastain. Danny Hamlin won two of the last four 500s. He'll have to go to the rear for inspection issues, and two-time Xfinity champ Tyler Reddick. John Hunter Nemechek, his dad is running this race. He's a rookie, and Ty Dillon, who finished top 10 his last three Daytona starts. Chase Elliott, second generation, NASCAR's most popular driver, and Michael McDowell, two top tens in the last two 500s. Ryan Blaney has gone to a backup car after a crash earlier in the week, and the defending series champion, Kyle Busch. Clint Boyer, it's his 15th try to win the 500. Will this be the day? And David Reagan, who has a great record on super speedways, coming out of a brief retirement. In row 16, starting 31st, you want to know who has the best active uh, average finish of active drivers, Ryan Priest alongside him, an emotional day, making it into the race on Thursday, racing his way in, Timmy Hill. Justin Haley won here last July. Brennan Poole, a rookie. Quinn Hauf, another rookie in row 18 with third generation racer, Corey LaJoy. Joey Gase and BJ McLeod in the 19th row. And in the last row, getting in on speed, 44-year-old veteran Brendan Gaughan, who announces he'll retire at the end of this season, and Reed Sorensen, who also timed in to the Great American Race. Moving to the front of the 40-car field is car number 48, the only number that Jimmy Johnson has ever run in his Cup Series campaign. The only owner he's ever driven for is Rick Hendrick in one of Rick's Chevrolets. Seven championships tying Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt on the all-time title list. Not one to show emotion, but Mike, I gotta believe underneath that helmet, Jimmy is feeling the impact of this final Daytona 500 leading this field. What a moment. A lap of honor for Jimmy Johnson as he starts his final full season and what may be his final 500. Before we get things started here in Daytona, let's rev up to green, brought to you by Toyota. Chevrolet is on the front row, a Ford and a Chevy row two, the same with row three and four, two Fords in row five. The first Toyota is back at row seven. That's Eric Jones. I calmed down a little bit, Mike, but I'm <laughs> getting excited again. Cannot wait to see what's going to unfold under green flag conditions. And so are these fans, 101,500 seats all sold out. Huge infield crowd of campers. 
And here they come off turn number four. I'll try it again. Try it again, Mike. Folks, if you have a favorite phrase you'd like to yell at your TV before they wave the green flag, now's your time. Dale Earnhardt Jr. waves the green flag. The 62nd Daytona 500 is underway. Ricky Stenhouse started outside, dropped in front of Alex Bowman. On the outside, that's 24 Byron drifting back. Yeah, clearly they had a plan where he, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was going to get down in front of the other Chevrolet of Alex Bowman. But I don't think those Fords are wanting to play that kind of game right now. They're trying to shuffle these Chevrolets to the back. Joey Logano, Eric Almarola on the outside. Logano in yellow and red. See if Stenhouse can lead the first lap of the Daytona 500. Three wide, six rows behind him. Stenhouse leads lap one. Boy, Joey Logano already really aggressive. Got a nice push from Eric Almarola. I thought he was going to make a move around Stenhouse as we came to the uh, starting line. Kyle Larson in the center lane, that lane that backed up through the middle there. Look at Stenhouse yes. moving up to the outside to cover the spot. Well, you know, one of the reasons why these drivers block is because track position is very valuable. If you get pushed to the back, it's not an easy task to just get back up to the front. So if you've got the momentum, you have the lead, go ahead and maintain it. Bowman on the inside with Bubba Wallace in tow and Martin, or rather Austin Dillon, up at the top 10 on the inside, trying to gain some ground against that outside lane, which is fully formed up. See that inside line goes up, does a side draft to that outside line. That stalls him out a little bit, slows him down, helps you maintain. You see right there in the middle of the four of Kevin Harvick going three wide to the inside of Jimmy Johnson and William Byron. He wants to get back up to some of his Ford teammates, getting a push from one of his actual teammates, Cole Custer. Harvick in ninth, the red car was Custer. Here's Jimmy Johnson. And you see the four of Harvick, the 41 of Custer moving past. Now all I, can, all I can think of is these guys must like the way their cars are driving. They must feel some security. Maybe that uh, cloud covers made the track nice and cool because they're very comfortable right in the middle lane. As you see Kevin Harvick lunging forward to get to the back. He got a big push from Cole Custer. You know, guys, to start this race, we know that Denny Hamlin in the 11, Christopher Bell in the 95 had to start at the rear of the field. The minute the green flag dropped, Martin Trex Jr. in the 19 and Eric Jones in the 20 went back there to pick them up, and they're already lined up five in a line, as you see right there on the inside. Yeah, I see that, Larry, and you can see that pack that's right there their width that they're drafting off of has actually lost touch to the lead packs. So there's a pretty big gap between these two groups. No points, no payoff for leading laps in this race. The Toyotas have gone back to that second pack. Stenhouse in a Chevrolet out front. Logano's Ford in second, Matt. Logano spotter TJ Majors told me lessons learned from late last year. This package, he felt like that Joey really needed to focus on speeding up his thought process and planning his moves. That's why in lap one, he says the Fords are lined up. Go when you want to. That's why he pulled out. Anytime the closing rate is increased, like what we see this year, big rear spoiler, lots of horsepower, about 100, 150 more horsepower this year compared to a year ago, Daytona. You have to think faster. Everything around you happens faster. You need more information from your spotter, and you need to make decisions very concise. 200 miles an hour into turn three. Now Stenhouse is the only Chevrolet in the front six. It's five Fords behind him, but they may be content to let him lead because the lead car burns more fuel faster. 
Yeah, we saw and we know fuel mileage is a concern. It's something that you're going to be playing that game all day long because you just back up the race from the end all the, and, and, you, and you start it. We saw in the pace lap some of these guys saving fuel. A nice orderly single file, shall we say, presidential motorcade at Daytona. Nine laps completed the Daytona 500. Ricky Stenhouse has led them all. The most laps that JTG Doherty Racing has led in 500 history. Chevrolet out front, five Fords behind him, then three Chevrolets, then four Fords. The Toyotas wasted no time in advancing to the rear. They are 32nd through 36th, way deep in this pack. When we heard Martin Truex Jr say to us they've got a plan clearly their pan, uh, plan was to drop to the back because we saw cars like eric jones drop back there and pick up that group here's eric jones i mean right at the beginning we that's when they got the green flag went into turn one immediately he waved those cars to the inside went to the outside and just dropped back to pick up his teammates he and 19 martin truex both fell way back into the 30s of this 40 car field Single file off turn number four, 10 laps complete. 65 laps will make up the first stage. They will need a fuel stop if we stay green during this stage. So there are the drop back cars. Also include uh, Alex Bowman and Bubba Wallace there. Well, the one sort of surprises me is Clint Boyer. Um, you know, he was already starting further back than he wanted to. And he's decided to go ahead and just let it ride out. Let's see what these guys want to do, how anxious they want to be here early in the stages of the Daytona 500. And this is the advantage. Look at our telemetry in the left. You could run 195, 196 miles per hour. You're not even running 50% throttle. That's Denny Hamlin. And that little yellow nub at the top of the circle, that is the steering angle indicator. 12 o'clock straight ahead. Well, we asked what happened to Clint Boyer. Here's Jamie. Well, he started this race 29th, Mike, and now he slipped back to 37th. The only thing he said on the radio is this car is tight. It's out of control tight, Vince. 
Well, in the 10 of Eric Amarola says the car is driving really good. And right now, as Mike, you indicated, they are very content to ride in their position right now and let Stenhouse burn the gas. But, but Amarola and um, Joey Logano, we've seen this act before. Remember, Amarola pushed Logano to a win in the duel. They said he's got a great pushing car, and we'll probably see that later today. Here's the feel-good story of this 500. Timmy Hill from Port Tobacco, Maryland. In that 66, he's 26 years old. He had to race his way in on Thursday, and Thursday night said, if we didn't make the Daytona 500, we would have had to shut this team down. He's in 10th place. Regan. Well, Mike, just to take it one step further, 10th place today. He was third in yesterday's Xfinity race, a career best. His crew chief, Steven Idle, he has never called the race from atop the big pit box. We talk about nervous drivers. That is a nervous crew chief on that pit box as well. Fourteenth place, Chase Elliott. One and a half seconds back of the lead in that number nine, Hendrick Chevrolet. Ross Chastain with him, and then right behind him, Alex Bowman, who started outside pole. And because he was on that inside line that couldn't keep pace with the formed up outside lane, he's now dropped back to 60. Yeah, and we saw that's the result of uh, Joey Logano and Eric Almirola and some of those Fords shuffling him out. They went to the outside. He was stuck in that inside lane with no help. And he went backwards a good bit. So good job on, on Alex Bowman to even be in 16th right now. Chase Elliott working the low side pretty much by himself. And let's go all the way to the back of this long line of cars, and here's your NASCAR champ, Kyle Busch, 33rd. That's Martin Truex just ahead, one of those Joe Gibbs racing Toyotas, four of them in this race, pretty much together. One of the hardest things I ever did, Mike, was in a race where we decided to have a strategy to go to the back. Because as a driver, all you want to do is pass cars, run wide open. I know I've got a good handling car and a fast car. And I know I can work my way to the front. But you know what? Sometimes the strategy is to be patient. And you've got to be patient in a 500-mile race. Drivers peeking out of line. It was Ryan Blaney that time, and here's John Hunter Nemechek to the inside in the 38. Rookie trying to gain some experience and a little ground here. 16 green flag laps complete in the 62nd Daytona 500. How about this ride above Lake Lloyd?
The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR, perfect for race fans. And by Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. 20 laps and the field comes by the start finish line under caution. A few sprinkles in turn two have halted things temporarily. I once worked a 4th of July race here in, in blazing heat, 85 degrees. I was on a scaffold in turn four. Everybody was getting soaked down in turn two. I was dry. It never <laughs> rained in turn four, but everybody in the infield in turn two was soaked. Race was delayed about 30 minutes. But well, just goes to show you how big this racetrack is. It, it could be raining at one end of the racetrack and completely dry in the other. Pretty good perspective to see just how long that back straightaway is. Close to 3,000 feet. Ricky Stenhouse has led every lap of the Daytona 500 so far. With 65 laps in stage one, well, we'll see when we come back how this might affect race strategy. First caution of the day in the Daytona 500. Welcome back to the 62nd Daytona 500. The track was dry, the cars were uncovered, the drivers were at the ready and ready to climb aboard, and you won't believe what happened. A wall of water swept across this racetrack. Just a deluge. 20 laps, 50 miles complete. Ricky Stenhouse, Joey Logano, your leaders in the 62nd Daytona 500. Postponed to tomorrow. So here's how they will restart with 20 laps complete. Ricky Stenhouse led them all. And then there are those five Fords right behind them before William Byron and Jimmy Johnson. You see how much they've gained or lost since the start of the race. Yeah, not a lot of change on that first page as you go back to row five. Look at these big gains by Timmy Hill, David Reagan. And what does that mean? That means some had to lose. You saw Alex Bowman lost 14 spots. Bunch of shuffling around in this part of the pack. All the way back to Bubba Wallace, who dropped 13 spots. And then look on the bottom line here at the Toyotas. Martin Truex dropped back 16 positions to pick up Kyle Busch and his teammates. Yeah, and we talked about these Toyotas dropping to the back. You heard from Kyle Busch. We're all very anxious to see what their strategy is. Well, let's get late-breaking stories from Pit Road, beginning Matt Yoakum. Mike, several hours of debate this morning over pit strategy, which basically has been written in pencil, depending upon your make. Now, in the Ford camp, they need about 13 gallons, so when Joey Logano hits pit road, look for his gas man, Nick Hensley, down here to hit not one, but hit it with the second can for maybe about a second and a half. That's all they need. Regan? Well, two-time Daytona 500 champion, Denny Hamlin had to start from the rear yesterday after failing pre-race inspection. Conventional wisdom would have him moving to the front very quickly, but instead his teammates dropped back to him as part of a Toyota plan. Today that plan does have to be altered slightly. They anticipated getting track position as things went on. Instead, they're going to have to possibly pass cars at the end of this first stage. Vince? Kevin Harvick and his crew chief, Rodney Childers, they've been together seven years, and they will both tell you this is the best car they've ever had here at Daytona. 20 laps yesterday did not change their opinion. In recent years, the issue for Harvick has been getting caught up in someone else's mess. But if Harvick can keep his car clean, he will be a strong pick today to pick up his second Daytona 500 win. Jamie Little. Well, Vince, his teammate Clint Boyer opted to drop to the back in those early laps of the Daytona 500 yesterday. It was actually a good opportunity for the team to get a read on his fuel mileage. That's something that can come into play today as early as this next round of laps, 20, 30 laps to go. When he comes in for this very first pit stop, watch for the 14 to take four tires and pack it as full as they can get it with fuel. Mike? Thanks, Jamie. Good job. Field in the back straightaway behind the safety car as they cross the start finish line. How cool is this? 21 shot, Mike? laps. There's the our drone. 80 mile an hour Fox drone cam. What a great view. <laughs> That's one you can't get when you buy a ticket only in front of your TV set. That is awesome. I'm excited about today. I, you know, when the sun's out like this and this track is going to be slick, it's going to be a handful for these drivers. Going to make it. 
very, very entertaining for all of us. Seventy-five degrees right now. It'll trail off to around sixty-eight uh, about the time this race is over. And as they come past, pit road is not yet open. Uh, there'll be a green light at the head end of pit road when the teams are allowed to pit. So we listened in on seven times series champion Jimmy Johnson racing in his final Daytona 500 today. Here's his crew chief. Good afternoon, everyone. Got a great afternoon for a race here. Want to say thank you to all the fans who came out yesterday and the ones who stayed over for today. Still have a great crowd in the stands. 48 team, let's buckle down, finish this thing the way we want to. Larry Mack, I think you got competition for your job there. These crew chiefs <laughs> becoming broadcasters. Have a look inside Jimmy's car at his heart rate monitor that we have right there. His resting heart rate is right about 40 beats per minute, 71 right now under the caution flag. We talk about the calm before the storm. Well, this is the calm because, and Jimmy Johnson's heart rate, I'm going to be honest, doesn't get very high, but this race stresses you out mentally. So as this race goes on, I can't wait to follow along with his heart rate and those beats per minute and see what affects him and what makes them go up or down. Mainly, it's going to be stress. Now, Johnson is lined up eighth. We do expect wholesale changes in this lineup when pit road is open and the green light is on. So cars will be able to pit this time by. How come when I operate my drone, the shots don't look quite like that? <laughs> <laughs> that is a, a great piece of equipment we've got there and uh, very creative uses we're going to find for it as the season goes on. Seeing the green light as they come through turns three and four. Noting that the pit road entry is going to be open this next time by. Larry, if you don't pit now, what's your strategy? If you don't pit now, Mike, you're going to have to pit probably with about 15 laps to go in this stage. I just, I could not imagine going with that strategy. Yeah, and that means you're banking on <laughs> cautions because the last thing you want to do is come down pit road under green. So it looks like more than half of the field will pit. At the front of the field, all but two cars, McDowell and Custer, come in. I'm seeing more four tires than I anticipated. Saw Joey Logano taking four tires and fuel. Here comes our leader, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., into his box. William Byron taking four tires and fuel. Just about everyone up and down pit road wants four fresh Goodyears and a full tank of gas for this restart. Well, and this track is green, so they want fresh tires because they know that you're probably going to use these tires up on this run a little bit more than normal. So cars that did not pit, Michael McDowell, Cole Custer, Reed Sorensen, B.J. McLeod, Corey LaJoy, Brendan Gaughan, Ryan Priest, and all the Toyotas. Joey Logano taking advantage of that first pit stall in, pit stall 40, I believe they're calling it, and comes off pit road first. Getting ready to resume the 500 in Daytona. Here's a quick word from Goodyear. Ready for the restart. It'll be 24 laps complete when they come by as scoring resumed as soon as they brought out the yellow flag and the cars moved away. Going to be one more lap of caution. Thought I saw the lights off atop the safety car, but now that group up front led by Michael McDowell and Cole Custer all down toward pit road. Now this is how close they are on fuel mileage. Look at some of these cars that just came down pit road. Joey Logano at the back of that. I don't know if he had an issue, but is he topping off fuel? and coming in this time because they're so tight on their uh, fuel window. And here come all of the Toyotas for the first time to pit road.
First time on pit road for the Joe Gibbs machines. Jimmy Johnson's team sided for too many men over the wall by that Hawkeye officiating system that NASCAR uses to electronically pass along pit road violations to the officials who then make the call. With Kevin Harvick's stop here, it's time to kick off Bush's fastest giveaway ever. Each time Harvick pits today, fans will have a chance, however long the stop takes, to tweet hashtag pit for Bush and hashtag sweepstakes for a chance to win a new sports car. So tweet now for a chance to win. Brad Keselowski's team cited for being over the wall too soon. NASCAR's going to have to find a way to reposition him in this lineup because the lights are out on the pit road and he's up on that front row. He would have restarted second, Ryan Newman. Kind of anxious to see Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's led this whole race, has had everybody in his rearview mirror. Now he's got a little work to do, but I think he's going to be just as aggressive trying to get that lead back. Race car dives to pit road, and here they come. Keslowski was not the car that was sighted, it was Corey LaJoy. So Keslowski aligned with Ryan Newman on the restart. Apologize for bad information there. You can see right away. A lot of Fords jumping down in that inside lane to get lined up, bumper to bumper. Get that inside mo uh, row moving. Three wide midway through the field. Ryan Cole Newman. Custer was up the way outside. Yeah, and Ryan Newman jumped up in front of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Eric Almirola gets a nice push from his teammate Kevin Harvick to move into second place. Three wide further back, as you mentioned. Ooh, we got one that slid off the bottom. Jimmy Johnson getting a push, going through the center. Harvick behind his teammate, Al Marola in the 10. And you see Keselowski moving lanes, goes to the outside to block that outside lane, but here comes a big run on the inside. Eric Elmarola said he had a fast race car. He's showing it right now. Really heads up driving there by Kevin Harvick behind the 10 of Eric Elmarola in that inside lane. You see he pushed that rear bumper, but as they got to the corner, he backed off just to make sure that Eric Elmarola's car was planted into the banking. Ricky Stenhouse, the 47, our pole sitter, a bit boxed in here, sitting in third on the outside. Here's Vince. Eric Amarola got a big shove from Kevin Harvick, and he immediately got on the radio to his spotter and said, tell him I don't need it. So they didn't want the big push at that particular moment. He feels like he's got enough speed right now without the big bump from behind. This early into the Daytona 500, I don't blame him. You know, you're up front, you're in a pretty content position. Yeah, you'd like to be leading, but how much risk do you want to take doing that? We saw him get a pretty big bump going into the trial on the last lap, and his hands turned to the right as that car almost jumped sideways. Almirola's gaining. He's got the lead into turn one on the inside. Yeah, taking advantage of that shorter route on the bottom lane as those cars led by Keselowski have to run that high line. But you can see the momentum of that outside lane carries him down the straightaways. Ford Mustangs out front for Brad Keselowski and Eric Almirola. That lead draft 
has about 20 cars, 21 cars in it. And basically nothing but Fords. You got Stenhouse there in six in the Chevrolet and Kurt Busch in 10th. Jimmy Johnson, how about the penalty called on Jimmy Johnson? Yeah, what got them in trouble was actually where they're pitting with that opening in front. You're going to see the guy just step out on pit road. You see him circled right there, just stepped out on pit road. Even though there's not a wall there, that's counted as too many men over the wall. Thanks, Larry. And again, it was 32 Corey LaJoy. We got some bad information on uh, whose crew was over the wall too soon. Not Brad Keselowski who runs in this front pack in the front three. First car on the outside to Almarola and Kevin Harvick. Saw Jimmy Johnson give a little wave. I think it was the 37 behind him of Brian Priest. Probably let Jimmy in. Just showing a little thank you. Joey Logano ran second for the first 20 laps of this Daytona 500. Matt? Mike in that outside lane, Logano told spotter TJ Majors a few moments ago, you're going to need to help me on the exit of turn four because the sun is just such a challenge. Can't see in my mirror because of the angle of the sun. Well, that won't be a problem at the finish of this Daytona 500. The lights will be on. It'll be dark. The sparks will be flying. Hopefully just from under the car and not between cars. Only glare you want when this race ends is from flash bulbs going off from cameras in victory lane. <laughs> right. <laughs> what a different race though today, Mike. We, we saw this race take off yesterday and I think a lot of uh, teams had a strategy that had fuel involved. Right now, these teams are not worried about fuel. They're side by side all the way back. Bump drafting here early on. Here's Alex Bowman with the move and his teammates lined up behind him and William Byron and Jimmy Johnson. Keselowski takes the high groove to the front with Ryan Newman and Stenhouse in tow, then Custer, Logano, and Matt Benedetto, who's new to the 21 of the Wood Brothers this year. Now going to the other end of the field in 36th place, Clint Boyer. Jamie. And just like we saw yesterday, Mike Clint Boyer, by design, has chosen to fall to the back. He just feels like that is his best bet to be safe and be there at the end. It has not been nice to him. The Daytona 500, that is, over the last few years, he has a hard time finishing these races. Now, I talked to his crew chief, and he's new this year, Johnny Klausmeyer. Johnny worked with our... Uh, Actually, he's in third now, Eric Almirola, over the last two years. Eric likes to be up front. So Johnny told me with Clint falling to the back, it's a whole different dynamic setup. You have to look at different fuel mileage numbers, but he's going to hold out and hope that it works for him today. Clint told me yesterday, I hate racing my guts out here only to get caught up in somebody else's mess. It, I don't know what the right strategy is, Mike. I, I've talked to a lot of drivers down the garage area. I've done it myself where I've pushed really hard to be up front, try to stay out of trouble, and you still get caught up in it. You ride around in the back, and even then, when it's time to go, you still get caught up in a wreck. So there is no set uh, strategy that really works, no real game plan. You just got to go for it and, and stick with whatever your plan is. With 33 laps complete, Fords have nine of the top 10 spots. And we'll be back with more from Daytona. But first, here's a special message from Wendy's.
Hey, I hear they're remaking a great racing movie. Top, Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great shot. 37 laps of 200 complete that'll make up the 500 miles here in Daytona. Ford's on point. Eight of the first nine. Ricky Stenhouse in 47. The only Chevrolet in that group. The rest of the Chevys are lined up. 11th through 20th. Then a gaggle of cars back to the Toyotas from 34th on back. And those Toyotas were wondering about, well, do we sit here? Do we pull out? Are we getting too far back? How are we doing? I think the 34 needs to catch up to the tail of that other pack. I know what they're doing, but the, the gap's too big. We might need to drive around them if they're going to uh, fall off that hard. No, they're going. They're going forward. Don't jump it. Don't jump it. We're going to race them, and then we're going to get stuck side by side. Don't do it. Well, Jeff, if they're that worried about getting side by side, that tells me they're in full fuel conservation mode. Well, I, I think they definitely want to stay in contact with this group. And the best thing is happening for them right now is that they are side by side. But as he mentioned, the 34, there's definitely a bigger gap than they want to see. Now, what we've been trying to decipher on what their strategy is, is we believe that towards the end of this stage, they're actually going to try to make a run at that front group and make up some positions because they're going to have to stop at that stage anyway. So I don't know why, what the advantage of saving fuel would be right now. Well, we'll find out. 65 laps is the end of stage one, completing lap 39 right now with Ryan Newman of Roush Fenway racing in the number six Ford out front. Of Eric Almirola and Brad Keselowski, and it's on for the lead. Here comes Almirola, who came within one mile of winning the Daytona 500 a couple of years ago, was leading in the back stretch and got turned around on the last lap. And what a fast race car he has today. He was really excited in his pre-race interview yesterday. He just, he, you could tell, he had that swagger. He had that confidence, and he's showing it today. Now, one of the things he could have easily done is moved up in front of Ryan Newman there to maintain this lead and control which lane he wanted to stay in. But he's working with his teammate right behind him, Kevin Harvick. They're pretty content being in that one uh, nose to tail right now. How about that one Chevrolet up toward the front, Ricky Stenhouse, our pole sitter, Vince. Well, and they just told Ricky, as you guys have been talking about, fuel mileage really important here as these teams try to get to the end of this first stage. And they just told Ricky, the mileage is not good if you're one of the first two cars in line. So keep that in mind as you see where Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has himself positioned. Well, look, he's got a little help now. The number nine and 48 Chevrolets of Chase Elliott and Jimmy Johnson are right up there with him. Larry? Yeah, Mike, I spent a lot of time last night and this morning talking with different crew chiefs, and it's amazing the difference in the mileage when you're up there leading, pulling the pack, or you're back single-file drafting. For example, if you're leading, you're getting about 5.2 to 5.3 miles to the gallon. That's a 39 to 40 lap fuel window. If you're single-file drafting, you're getting as much as 5.8 to 6 miles to the gallon, which will add about two to three, maybe up to four laps to what you can run on fuel. You can see right here, right on board with Christopher Bell. He's running about, what, 60, 70% throttle, so definitely in fuel mode. And, and, you know, now I'm really starting to get concerned with some of these cars at the front that are running wide open and have been side by side. They're not saving any fuel, and some of those cars didn't even top off, Mike. Now, how about the Toyotas way out back, Matt? Mike, go back to practice on Friday. The five Toyotas were all in a line for over 20 laps. They'd run five laps apiece, rotating who was in the front. That way they could have great information which Toyota would be the best puller for this very situation during the event. All right, they're holding station out back. Now, there is a big difference in this group, and the cutoff line is sixth. Everybody above the line pitted at lap 23. Everybody below this line, well, now Stenhouse, pitted and topped off at lap 24. So that one extra lap could make a difference. I think it is going to make a difference. Otherwise, I think some of these drivers are going to have to start saving a lot of fuel towards the end of this stage. Jamie? Guys, I'm watching, and I'm thinking that the Toyotas, the only way their strategy is going to work is if these guys get single file in front, because the only way they can advance is if they're single file and they can all push. We saw how fast those guys were together by themselves, but I think as long as these guys are too wide in the front, the Toyotas can get to the back of this pack, but they're not going to be able to get to the front. I don't know what they have to gain then. 
26 laps. We'll find out. That's the end of stage one. Eric Almirola in a Ford is your race leader. The first Chevy is Ricky Stenhouse in sixth. The first Toyota, Martin Truex back in 34th. 39 laps complete in the Daytona 500. Bill Elliott won the Daytona 500 in 1985 and was a perennial most popular driver choice. Now that mantle falls to his son Chase, whose Hendrick Chevrolet moments ago took over the lead from Chris Buescher. The Chevys moved to the front, including Jimmy Johnson, who restarted tail end of the field. Yeah, remember second he, place. He had that penalty during that pit stop, but Jimmy Johnson's been locked on to the bumper of either Chase Elliott. I think we saw him working with William Byron and Alex Bowman. So those four Chevrolets at Hendrick Motorsports feel like they saved enough fuel. And they, you know, they showed a lot of speed in qualifying. We haven't seen it play out so far today until now. So now there's a six pack of Chevys at the front of the field. Chase Elliott, Jimmy Johnson, Alex Bowman, William Byron, the Hendrick cars, Ricky Stenhouse for JTG Doherty Racing, and Ty Dillon in the 13. It's a late afternoon Monday holiday, 48 laps complete, stage break at lap 65. Sounds to me like a good time to crank it up.
15 cars in the lead draft off turn number four. Things are getting busy, though, behind them as drivers begin to jockey for position. Uh, Kyle Busch just said on the radio, come on, it's time to go. <laughs> 14, make it 13 laps left to go in stage one. Well, as far back as they are, I don't know where they're going to go. Here's Kevin Harvick's radio. Best thing I've ever seen. Yeah, all those guys that were around here were all right saving fuel. We can do that on the bottom. Vince? Yeah, Kevin was confused as to why they all went to the top of the track when they had been running at the bottom, and he was told there were only four Fords down on the bottom, so they all went to the top, and Kevin didn't like that strategy and that line of thinking, but that's where they went. He was a good team player, but just wasn't too pleased about it and didn't understand. Now, you're riding with Austin Dillon in the Coca-Cola cam. Dillon was concerned that leading that pack, he was burning too much fuel. So he's drifted back out of the lead position, but things quickly went double wide there. In 12th place, Ryan Blaney. Here's Regan. Well, the report from crew chief to driver Ryan Blaney just now was that you have saved enough fuel. Feel free to go whenever you want to. You're good to go to the end of the stage. So these cars up front, some of them appear to be okay with fuel now. And I think that's, you know, what you see out of these Chevrolets leading right now. They came a lap later, topped off, and then they saved a little bit in the middle of the pack. As soon as these Fords had to start saving a little bit more, they drove right by them and took the lead. In 11 laps, we'll see who wins stage one of this year's Daytona 500. You're watching the 15-car lead draft from the Goodyear Blimp, providing our aerial coverage today. Goodyear, discover what's possible. Keep moving. Goodyear, more driven. 
Eight laps to go in stage one. Joey Logano, the yellow car on the outside lane, trying to make something happen here with Eric Almirola on the outside. Yeah, I feel like they now are in their fuel window. They've saved enough fuel. They want to try to get track position or get those valuable points that are going to be awarded at the end of this stage. Now, a quarter of a lap down. What's going on with the Toyotas? Here's Kyle Busch's radio. Can the lead pack make it the whole way right here? Bunch of them saved. A couple of them will probably be close. So if they can all make it, we're racing the whole pack. So we either go up there and race it or we just hang out here and forfeit. Wow. Listen, I'm as baffled as Kyle Busch is right now of what their strategy is. I don't know if anybody actually knows. I just don't see what they have to gain. It doesn't seem like they're going to pit before this stage ends, so I, I'm just completely confused. Well, look, I, I thought they were saving gas or just being conservative to stay out of the wreck, and then oh. we thought... And there it is. One car goes sliding across the infield grass. William Byron, who won his qualifying race here on Thursday, and that will change everything. Certainly has changed it for that exalted 24. Contact with Ricky Stenhouse. Puts William Byron into the inside wall and a hard hit. I believe he was in fourth position in front of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Well, he'd like to drive it away, but he hasn't seen the front end of that. Oh, that's that's definitely that's going roll, to roll back their material. chances in any way of winning this Daytona 500. So Jeff officially, Nelson. it is the second caution flag of the Daytona 500. Watch the 47 of Stenhouse. And they had just gotten a run. The 10 gets to the rear bumper, the 13. Little surge of the 47. Oh, he gets to the left side of that rear bumper. And we've seen when you try to bump draft, you need to be either the center or to the right. Oh, it almost looked like Stenhouse was going to poke out and try to go by him and maybe misjudged it, made contact, turned William Byron right around. Ah, oh, you know, those guys had so much anticipation after that great duel on Thursday. Yeah, you know, you could just see as Ricky Stenhouse Jr. moved left, he just caught that left rear of the bumper. Into the safer barrier that now lines the inside of this speedway as well as the outside. And here's Chad Knauss, his crew chief. You know, you work so hard. William is okay. That's the AMR safety team attending to him out there in the back straightaway, and he'll make the mandatory ride to the Advent Health Care Center. And his hopes of winning the 500 are dashed. Yeah, you just work so hard to get down here. You got one chance every year to win the Daytona 500, and that chance is now gone for that 24 team. Now they're on pit road. Fords, led by Fords of Ryan Newman, Brad Keselowski, and Kevin Harvick, and Cole Custer, and all the Toyotas coming in to top off as well. Joey Gase will get the free pass, meaning he can come around under caution and get back on the lead lap. Well, this is one area you see Christopher Bell, one of our rookies, overshot his pit, had to back into it, so that'll cost him a little bit of time. So they're going to give up those stage points by pitting now. You see they go around to the left side, put four tires on the 18 to Kyle Busch, but they're, they're going to gain that track position back after those others pit when this stage is over. There's the race off pit road. 12 drivers at the front of the field did not pit as William Byron gets sent sliding across the grass into the infield barrier and out of the 500.
The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by the all-new Ford Explorer, built Ford proud. Another pit stop for the number four car means another chance for you to win a new car from Bush Beer. All you have to do is tweet hashtag pit for Bush and hashtag sweepstakes while Harvick is pitting and you could win big, so tweet now. Coming to the end of stage one, we're going to get one to go this time. Michael McDowell comes in to top off. So does Timmy Hill. And there's here comes Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch and all the rest of the Toyotas. Well, I think we're starting to now learn more about this strategy by the Toyotas. I think they're going to give up track position, give up stage points, and try to get themselves out of any potential wrecks and be in position to win the Daytona 500 at 400 or 450 miles, not right now. Larry, you agree with this as a long-term plan? Yeah, I thought they were just trying to get their track position right there, but them coming back to top off, that does not buy them anything but being at the back of the field, out of trouble. So when they take the green, it'll be two laps to go to the end of stage one. Playoff points at stake for the stage winner and points to be awarded to the top ten when they take that green and white checkered flag at lap 65. Where's our drone going to restart? <laughs> Anywhere he wants, right? <laughs> well, we know what the pace car is running. Our drone is out running the pace car right now, so that thing gets up and goes. 80 versus 70, I believe. All right, so on point, Chevrolets, Chase Elliott, Jimmy Johnson. Bowman and Stenhouse in Chevys. Eric Almirola, the lone floor uh, Ford in the top five. Looks like an X-Wing fighter plane, uh, fighter from Star Wars, doesn't it? So cool. So cool. And I, yes, I am a Star Wars fan. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really going to be curious to see how important stage points are to these competitors right now. Because if they're going to be aggressive to get those points, then at the end of each of these stages today, we're going to see a heck of a race and a battle for them. None of the top 13 have been on pit road since lap 24. Everyone from 14th on back has just pitted. Two laps to race to the end of stage one as Chase Elliott and Jimmy Johnson lead them toward turn one. And just now the Toyotas are crossing the start finish line. Half a lap back. And, and really not even moving at full speed. So I think they feel like maybe something big's about to happen in front of them. And they're saving a lot more fuel, too, doing that. Big push from the 88 of Alex Bowman to the rear bumper of his teammate, Chase Elliott. Oh, it looked like Kurt Busch was going to poke to the outside, try to take it three wide. Yeah, he and Matt Benedetto had a look up high. But as they come off four, it'll be one lap to the end of stage one. And remember, the top ten pay points at the end of this stage. Jimmy Johnson with Stenhouse leading the outside row. And the Joe Gibbs cars are coming to the line now. I think they can probably about a third throttle it to the end of the stage. Some decisions for those Hendrick Chevrolets. Are they going to move up and work with Jimmy Johnson, their teammate, and the other Chevrolet in the outside row there of Stenhouse? Or do they have to block that big run that's coming from that very fast Number 10 of Eric Almirola. Here come the Fords, 10 and 22, Almirola. Ooh, Ty Dillon. Three wide, down to the line, and the stage one winner, Chase Elliott over Alex Bowman, Eric Almirola, Joey Logano, Good job, buddy. and Jimmy Thanks, Johnson. Coach. Meanwhile, half a lap later, yeah, these guys are in full fuel saving mode. And the rest of the field crosses the line. Let's check with Jamie. And William Byron has been checked and released, and he is okay. So much preparation, so much draft practice, all to end like that. What exactly happened? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, uh, got hit in the back bumper. I saw a brief replay of it. Um, just see here. Yeah, I mean, he was kind of moving when he hit me first, uh, so that kind of pushed me left with him. 
and then he hit me off center in the left rear and just turned me around. So um, I think it, it was just enough. The first hit when he was sliding left on my bumper was re what really moved my car left uh, with him. And uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's unfortunate. You know, I, I feel like if, I don't know. I, I feel like there's really no reason it's lap 45 or whatever it was to be that aggressive moving across my bumper, but it is what it is. Uh, we'll go into Vegas and, and uh, go try to win that one. All right, William Byron, first one out of the Daytona 500. Mike. Thanks, Jamie. Las Vegas Motor Speedway becomes the second race of the season. Beginning this year, that's where Fox NASCAR coverage will be this weekend. And a hats off to not just our cameramen, the great camera work you've seen, and all of our technicians, all of our staff, many of whom have not been home for 25 days. They went to Miami to do the Super Bowl, came right here to Daytona, two weeks of speed weeks. And tonight, it all gets packed up and rolls across the country to Las Vegas. Pit road should be open this time around for the end of stage one service. Chevrolets of Elliott and Bowman, the Fords of Almirola and Logano, and Jimmy Johnson are your first five in stage one. Chris Buescher got the final stage point. February 28th, John Cena is back, joining the superstars of SmackDown as he returns home to Boston. A special Friday night SmackDown, February 28th. 8 Eastern, 7 Central, on Fox. You know, I, I would say a lot of the drivers that st that pitted on that last caution will stay out. The ones that did not will pit. I have no idea what the Toyotas are going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, I, I, the way their strategy played out in this first stage, they pitted late. They knew they only had to race two laps, and they knew just how slow they could go and not get lapped before the end of the stage to save as much fuel as possible. I think that's plays all we out. do know. Yes. <laughs> It road's a busy place, Matt. Mike, Chase Elliott's in. Moments, he says, off turns four. He does experience a little bit of free, but overall, the car is good. Meanwhile, you can see the 22 of Logano going on the left side. Four-wheel drip. Air pressure adjustment to try to tighten him up, Regan. 88 of Alex Bowman. The only concern Greg Ives had today was strategy. He wanted to be around Chevys at the end of the race and the stages. Vince? Eric Alvarola said, I'm good. Just give me four tires and a tear-off. Brad Kozlowski wins the race off pit road. Uh, those cars with the green up marks likely took just two tires. See there, Denny Hamlin, our leader currently. Are they going to come down pit road? But let's dial up our stage one winner, Chase Elliott. Hey, Chase, this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me, buddy? Hey, Chase, Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Well, we'll try them again after the break. We'll check the frequency, Kenneth, and uh, try again after the break. Chase Elliott, stage one winner.
Yesterday here in Daytona, the President and First Lady paced the uh, opening laps of the Daytona 500 in the presidential limousine. And we got 20 laps underway. We're now at lap 68 in the 500. Here's your stage one winner. Yeah, let's give him a, another try. Hey, Chase, this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Yeah, go ahead. Well, great way to start the Daytona 500 with a, a stage win. Tell us about your car. How's the, you know How are the conditions? How's the car driving? Certainly shows that it has plenty of speed. Yeah, our Napa Camaro, I think, has been... Uh been plenty fast enough, just a matter of being in the right place, as you know, and um, hoping you know, the lane goes your way. So, nice to get a playoff point, and hopefully we can uh, finish out the day just like that. Well, we've certainly seen some different strategies play out. You know, some saving fuel mileage. You guys are pretty uh, aggressive getting to the to the front there. What do you think? How, how easy is it going to be for you to get back up there this time? Yeah, I think that's the question. You know, everybody was doing different things there for that first stage and on different agendas. So you're only battling, you know, a quarter or half the field versus, you know, here later on be battling whoever's left. So we'll see. All right. Thanks for talking to us. Good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, appreciate you all. Enjoy. Chase Elliott, stage one winner. There's his pit stop, Denny Hamlin will be up front for the restart with Cole Custer for stage two. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. And by Ram Trucks, Motor Trends back-to-back -back truck of the year. Ready for the green flag for stage two. Denny Hamlin, the race leader, has elected the inside lane against Cole Custer. Then Truex Harvick, Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, they approach the Geico restart zone where the leader has the option anywhere in that area to hit the gas and bring them to green. 
And now we're going to see what those Toyotas can do since they've got that track position. All the first seven cars pitted before the stage break, including all five of the Toyotas. Penny Hamlin defending Ooh, 500 champ. run coming from Mark Truex Jr. Teammate yeah. Kyle Busch right behind him and more Toyotas with Eric Jones and Christopher Bell. Joey Logano in the middle lane, fifth car back. A little bit more info on what's going on ahead of me. When I'm right on him, uh, if I'm right on him, I need to be pushing. If I'm pushing, I need to know when to lift. So if you see me within a foot, two feet of the car in front of me, give me the gap in front, uh, I'll take care of the behind. Yeah, tip off. Matt? And then TJ Majors also said, I'll tell you when he's tight on the door. TJ told me that with this package, they're really trying to speed up their thought and decision-making process on planning their moves. Well, at a football field a second, you better talk fast. Yeah, things are happening very fast. And when you're locked onto that driver's bumper, you can't see anything. That's why those eyes in the sky and the spotter stand is so important. Great information Joey Logano is giving his spotter. Five cars out front, single file, double wide there on back. They're trying to form up that outside lane in one continuous line, and now they've done so as they get to turn one. Well, we were wondering what these Toyotas were doing up front. We've got the answer. And it just, you know, basically they gave up that first stage in any track position or stage points in order to get control of this race. We still have one more stage to go, though, so somebody else further back might be able to play that same game. Well, it's 5 o'clock here. It's rush hour in <laughs> Daytona Beach. Yes, it is. At 200-plus miles per hour. Well, it was an easy graphic for our crew to build Toyota top performers. There are five cars in the race for Toyota, and they're running in positions one through five. Pretty impressed with some of our rookies here. We talk a lot about Christopher Bell, but Cole Custer, another one of our rookies, sitting there in sixth position right now. Now, all 39 cars are in one continuous fast freight train, single file. There you go, rookies nose to tail. Christopher Bell in the 95 and fifth. Colt Custer in the 41 and Stuart Haas racing in sixth. Here's Matt. Mike moving up the cup, Christopher Bell new to the digital dash. He actually went down and talked to his Xfinity team from a year ago and got a visual to go back and tell Jason Ratcliffe he wanted it more like old school with analog gauges. Now when he missed his stall on pit road, it wasn't because of that or Christopher. Actually Ratcliffe took the blame and said, I just have too many buttons on my radio. Sorry, my bad. A couple of Chevys poke out on the inside now from what was a 39-car freight train, and Ricky Stenhouse, the 500 pole sitter, leads that group on the inside, trying to work his way back to the front. Well, we know he has a fast race car. If he has somebody that's going to latch onto the rear bumper like we see here with Jimmy Johnson, I think there's a very good chance they can work their way in that lower lane to the front. The Chevys have a new model this year, which means a new front fascia and a new rear bumper compared to last year, which proved problematic. How is it different? Well, we saw, and here's Ryan Blaney jumping down to the inside lane. I think they see those Chevrolets coming. He's going to try to block that lane or maybe use that to get some momentum. But you're right, Mike. There's definitely a different nose on those uh, Chevrolets. It's round, more rounded than it has been in the past, but it still does come to a slight point. 77 laps complete in the Daytona 500. 
Coca-Cola and NASCAR. It's a Sunday thing. Welcome back to the Daytona 500 on Fox, brought to you by NASCAR's premier partners. 200 of 500 miles complete. Last year's winner, Denny Hamlin, in command from Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Busch. And here comes Austin Dillon, another 500 winner with a run Woo! down to the inside of Ryan Blaney. And these runs are getting faster and faster, and you got to be real careful. Ryan Blaney thought about blocking Austin Dillon, and luckily he thought twice about it. Brad Kozlowski, Joey Logano on the high side with their Penske teammate, Ryan Blaney. Yeah, we saw the Toyotas were running that high lane, and as that inside lane started to form and catch them, they moved down to block that. Now an outside lane's forming, led by Brad Kozlowski. What's missing from that group of leaders are the rookies. Every rookie driver in NASCAR is required to have a yellow strip across his bumper, and it's almost like somebody pulled the tape because both Christopher Bell and Cole Custer got shuffled out of that front group. They didn't get the memo that their teammates were getting ready to go to the inside lane. <laughs> That's just going to be one of many lessons they're going to learn this year and in this 500 mile race. Now we've long said the leader cleans the track for everybody and Denny Hamlin's got a bit of trash on the grill. And there's just no way to get that debris off there if you're the leader. The only way, if that water temperature and water pressure starts to go up and become an issue, which gets maybe around 300 degrees, he's going to have to drop back and try to get the turbulent air around these cars to pull that piece of debris off. The three Penske Fords leading Chase Elliott Chevy trying to make something happen on the outside here. We go back to last Sunday's clash where these two teammates had, had a bit of a clash when Joey Logano put a big block on Kyle Busch, caught his teammate Brad Keselowski in that big wreck. He wasn't too happy about it and he voiced his opinion. And Joey Logano, I remember one of the comments he said, he goes, Somebody asked him, are you going to get it sorted out? He goes, we have to. Well, so far, that's working out for him. See, the three of Austin Dillon get shuffled out by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Meanwhile, the inside line is scooting away. 
All right, the concern about that debris on the grill of Denny Hamlin, well, the, the uh, team has become concerned. Yeah, at a 45 feet pace, uh, they're not going to be able to get up here, so everyone just needs to stay tight as tight as they can. You know, that's Denny Hamlin. Denny has a lot of confidence, and he has a, a great experience of being up front and winning the Daytona 500 twice. So no surprise to me that he's shown leadership from the driver's seat, trying to give some instructions to those others behind him. Now, those four Toyota drivers in practice work together, figuring out how they could swap that lead position without slowing down the lap times. But what about here in this big, long pile of traffic? Well, and that's what Denny Hamlin was alluding to, is if we're locked in together, they're not going to be able to shuffle us out. So if we can work together. Now, they did lose uh, help in Christopher Bell, so they've lost one of their cars. But with four, I think they'll be okay. How about it, Vince? Bush, the 18 of Kyle Busch is concerned about the 19 of Martin Truex. He asked what's wrong with the 19 here. It's like he's lifted and he can't stay with the 11. Kyle doesn't like the way the 19 is handling and it's impacting the way his car is handling. Yeah, Vince, we just saw some movement of the 19. I think it was maybe the off of turn four, which can be a handling issue. The sun really bears down on that part of the corner. We saw the car move up about a half a lane. 21, now 22 of 65 laps in stage two complete. Denny Hamlin out front in Daytona. The double zero has crashed here in Daytona. Rookie Quinn Hauf. Other cars involved as they come to the caution flag. It'll be the fourth caution of the day coming at lap 90. That's the 52 of McLeod. B.J. McLeod got caught up in it as well. Hauf was running 28th. McLeod 35th. Cloud will pull away. Let's see what happens here. Left of your screen. You can see they're coming up to put him a lap down. Ooh. Oh, it looked to me like, you know, Quinn just came up a little bit more than what the 10 of Almarola was expecting, and they just touched and end up turning him into the outside 
Lane, that was almost, that was a close call for our 10 of Eric Amarola also. Now those Fords had dropped to the back to try to stay clear of all this mess. And you see BJ nowhere to go, tries to avoid that wreck and then he catches the outside wall. Riding with Kyle Larson, credit one onboard camera. I just really think Eric Almirola expected expected Quinn Hap to stay lower off of that corner and he was just going to get to his outside, side draft him and go right on by. So 90 laps complete under caution for the fourth time today. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by the strongest, most advanced Chevy Silverados ever. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR, perfect for race fans. So the crash involves youngster Quinn Howe from Virginia and veteran B.J. McLeod from Florida. But the concern is for Eric Almirola, who had one of the fastest Fords here. How many times can he block me going so much slower? And that's just common sense. I've seen it on TV, but you can't do that. Yeah, yeah I just told his spotter not to do it again. I think he's done blocking today. Yeah, you can see the left front, maybe a little damage on the 10 of Amarola. And, and my bad, I thought Quinn looked like he was backing up and going you know, slower, like he was going a lap down. They were going to go to the outside of him. That was actually for position, and he was just trying to move up to stay in front of that group. See repairs going on, and here's the four now with a little damage to the right rear quarter, uh, corner of the bumper of Kevin Harvick. Tire carrier crawled underneath there to see uh, how extensive that damage is. Want to punch out that bumper cover so it retains some of its aerodynamic property. Larry? Well, again, pit road was closed right then. Now, Jamie Mack and I, we have no windows in our bunker, but the window is open to be able to make it to the end of this stage. So I would say when it opens, Mike, we're sitting right now coming to 38 to go in this stage. Everybody will be in more than likely for four tires and fuel. Well, Larry, there's no safe strategy here. We've had two incidents for cautions in this race, one right near the front of the field and one out back. There is no safe strategy or place to be in this field as we're finding out. And that's, I said this earlier, Mike, I've, I've tried both strategies and this is where luck kind of has to come into play. You got to be smart, be precise in your decision making and hope that it's your day. So it looks like Quinn Hauf will join William Byron out of the Daytona 500 leaving 38 cars in pursuit of the Harley Earl Trophy. And green light on, pit road is open. Harvick stopping before pit road open uh, means he's going to have to restart last. Matt? Hamlin Truex on pit road one, two. That's how they finish in 2016. Truex says that if he stays up about a foot, the car is okay, but then it will go to the loose side depending on how the 11 moves around. Regan? Eric Jones' team's made multiple long runs in practice for this scenario, so they knew how their car would be working. Right now, it's very good. Denny Hamlin out front of the pack with the debris. His car temps went up a little bit. He monitored them the whole time. Vince? You see the 18 pulling away. Just a tick tight. Right sides only for the 18 of Bush. Here's your Ram race off pit road. Denny Hamlin, Ricky Stenhouse picks up three spots. Joey Logano, six. Rookie Tyler Reddick, 11. Quinn Hauf and B.J. McLeod. Trouble in the back straightaway.
In yesterday's pre-race, two heads of state, the President of the United States and the King of Stock Car Racing, seven-time Daytona 500 winner Richard Petty, who received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1992. Kevin Harvick's pit crew moving fast today, so get ready for another chance to win a custom Bush sports car. Just tweet hashtag pit for Bush and hashtag sweepstakes during Harvick's pit stops for your chance to win right now. Well, this was a busy pit cycle, uh, beginning with Eric Jones. Yeah, you see Eric Jones comes in, front tire changer, Watch the hose just get pulled underneath the car, and when they drop this jack, it drops on the hose. Eric, they'd stop Eric Jones, he has to back up. Cost him a lot of time getting off pit road. And now a close call as Brad Keselowski and Ross Chastain both exiting the pits at the same time, same place. There's the uh, Advent Health onboard camera for Chastain. And that visor cam, gonna get some great shots from that. We've got one on Ross Chastain, one on Jimmy Johnson. Ross gets a cold drink. Checking in with Jimmy Johnson, visor cam and our heart rate monitor. Still pretty calm, I think, you know, we're gonna see Things are gonna heat up for Jimmy Johnson. There's that view from the visor camera and continue to monitor that heart rate, uh, the uh, beats per minute up to 95. So Johnson will restart 11th on this restart. He'll be the third Chevrolet. Stenhouse will be on the front row. Chase Elliott in seventh. Uh, Reed Sorensen had an uncontrolled tire on that pit stop. So he will go to the tail end along with Kevin Harvick who pitted uh, with damage before the pits were open. They'll be restarting out back. B.J. McLeod still in the race, two laps down. The 37 cars in front of him are all on the lead lap. We're almost halfway through stage number two, which will take us to lap 130. And with that incident on pit road, Eric Jones now not with those other teammates of his at Joe Gibbs Racing, so they're down to three up front. Now Denny Hamlin this time chose the outside of the front row, inside last time. And here we come to green. Hamlin drops down in front of Stenhouse. Abandoning his teammate Truex leading the outside lane. And yeah, well Truex might get the lead here because he's got a big push from Chase Elliott. Truex climbed the hill in turn two. Yeah, it sort of separated. Made a big gap between he and Chase Elliott. The top six with an equal number of Chevys, Fords, and Toyotas, two apiece. You're back there. Start to see that three inside lane. You, they're two wide behind us, three rows back. Start to prevail breaking free of Mark Trex Jr. Now three Toyotas in the top five with the Chevy of Stenhouse and the Ford, the 22 of Logano. Now we heard before that caution came out with a 19 Mark Church Jr. not having as good a handling race car, gets loose every once in a while. Just wondering if that's gonna affect him being aggressive on some of these side drafts, but you can see now they go up top. Teammate Denny Hamlin goes to the top, allowing Joey Logano to get a run on the inside. And look who's behind him. Ross Chastain in the inside lane there. And rookie Christopher Bell giving him a push.
anytime a number of cars shift lanes, if they go from the inside to the outside lane, all of a sudden the momentum really gets stalled out in that particular lane. So you saw as Denny Hamlin went to the outside lane, that inside lane just started to fall back. Now Chase Elliott making a run to the inside of Kyle Busch. And here comes Logano to give him a big push off turn number two. Whoa, you see the 47 of Stenhouse getting a big push from the 18 of Kyle Busch in the back of that car wiggling. You hear Busch had to pedal it a bit to stay off of Stenhouse mid-corner. That push from Logano at turn two paid off. For Elliott, he is right there for the lead. Side by side at the line with Denny Hamlin. And you know, Stenhouse is one of those guys, not only is he an aggressive pusher, he likes them to get to his rear bumper and, and just lock on. He does not mind that car moving around down the straightaways as long as he's getting a big push. 250 miles, halfway complete when they come to the line. They'll see the crossed flags. Brad Keselowski making a move to the outside of Truex. Penske cars lined up on the outside. Keselowski, Blaney, Logano. Denny Hamlin leads at lap 100. Chase Elliott feels like getting in that outside lane in front of Brad Keselowski is the best route for him to get to the front. Hamlin's number 11 have won two of the last four Daytona 500s, and he's the only 500 winner from the last four years who's led more than a single lap today. Compared to previous Daytona 500, so we've seen a lot of different drivers leading quite a few laps. You have know, seen Chase Elliott lead more than 20 laps, Stenhouse more than 20 laps, Hamlin in um, you know 30 laps led that we just saw. Toyota leading Chevy and Toyota. Denny Hamlin out in front as we go Fox side by side.
104 laps, 105 now complete in Daytona. Denny Hamlin continuing to lead Ricky Stenhouse. The front stretch is shaded. The turns and the back stretch still in full sun. But boy, Jeff, the drivers, they sure get an eye full of sunshine as they try to come off turn number four here. Yeah, this time of day, that sun starts to set and you have a real problem with vis uh, visibility off of turn four. So as you come through three and four, see they're in, in the turn three, on board the visor camera, Jimmy Johnson. Now you can imagine, you know, if, if you get a bump from behind, you got somebody on the outside right there for a split second, you basically are blind coming off of turn four. At 200 miles an hour. At 200 miles per hour. And, and we go on board here with Kevin Harvick. He's got a clear shield, and he didn't even close his eyes. You, you just happen to suffer through that for that split second. A Bush beer camera on Harvick, who has not advanced after having to restart tail end for pitting too soon with damage. He's climbed to 31st, but two of his teammates, Clint Boyer and Eric Almarola, have dropped back to work with him. And I just wonder, are they going to try to use the same strategies that worked so well for the Toyotas to give them track position? Will they come in before the stage ends and, and try to leapfrog them after that? Now on that inside line, about seventh, a Daytona 500 winner, Austin Dillon. Jamie? And so far, so good for Austin Dillon on that last stop. He's one of the drivers that took four tires. He said it really seemed to help his handling. Now, Austin is reunited with an old crew chief, Justin Alexander, back atop the pit box this season. And you just mentioned that he won the Daytona 500 in 2018. He did it with that man that you're looking at on the left-hand side of the screen. Justin said they are both thrilled to overcome everything they've been through, working together again. The car has been good all speed weeks, and they expect maybe a number two later on today. Well, they've shown speed. He's currently in ninth place. When he won in 2018, he led the final mile. That was it. Since the restart, let's look at our biggest, our USAA biggest movers since the last restart. And there's Dylan picking up eight spots. Michael McDowell and Austin Dillon's new rookie teammate, Xfinity champ Tyler Reddick. Yeah, you said the last mile, not the last lap, because he only got that lead in turn three. So one mile from turn three to the start finish line. One hundred eight laps complete. Lap one thirty will be the end of stage two. A lot of pomp and circumstance in yesterday's pre-race. There's Austin Dillon thrilled to meet the president of the United States.
Lap 112 in the books from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Celebrating the endless pursuit of forward momentum. Goodyear, more driven. Denny Hamlin in a Toyota. Ricky Stenhouse, our pole sitter in a Chevrolet. Then the two Gibbs Toyotas of Kyle Busch and Martin Truex. And how about Ross Chastain in that front five? And Jimmy Johnson, Chase Elliott, Christopher Bell, and Austin Dillon. Seven-time series champ Jimmy Johnson, single file in sixth place. Oh, that's never fun, trying no. to communicate with your spotter. You know, that was Earl Barton talking to him and Cliff Daniels, his crew chief. They've had some real radio issues at Hendrick Motorsports this week, Matt. Going back to practice on Friday, the 24 of William Byron and also the 88 of Alex Bowman, both were experiencing issues in that practice. They were chasing it. You could see Jimmy reach down to try to switch the channel to see if that might clear up the communication. Also, the overnight rains may have had an effect. Uh, cars were allowed to be pushed inside, but there was quite a bit of rain last evening. The uh, NASCAR requires the teams to use analog radios for driver to crew to spotter communication so that the fans in the stands with their analog scanners can listen in to the communication. And remember, with all that rain, you just wonder if any connections maybe got a little moisture in them that's causing that disturbance. Joey Logano pokes out to the outside of his Penske teammate, Ryan Blaney. Now Logano and Keselowski working in tandem. Not gaining a ton of ground right there. Well, we said we were going to follow along with Jimmy Johnson's heart rate monitor, so let's go on board that 48 car on this last restart. You can see on the left, at 97 beats per minute as he goes up through the gears. Immediately it starts to go up. And what you're going through right here as a driver, you want to get that restart and get up through the gears, not miss any shifts. You've got your spotter in your ear talking uh, you through the lane choice. You're going to close up on the rear bumper like you did with Ryan Blaney. Look how that heart rate just spiked right then. All the way up to 123, which is which is high for Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> for the average human, I think I would start at 123. Now the Penske cars tried to get something going on the outside. But you see Keselowski in the two, Blaney in the 12, ended up right back on the bottom. We'll see if uh, Logano drops in or if he stays up top with Austin Dillon in the three. I really think that the 12 of Ryan Blaney is having some issues handling. He has his hands full because we're seeing that car move and slide around a lot in the corners. You know, these teams have the option to be able to lower the back of these cars. No ride height restrictions. And when you do that, it gets Gives the car a lot of speed, gets that spoiler out of the air, but it also makes it a handful without having the downforce in the draft. Twelve and a half laps to go in stage two of three. Three wide up in turn number four. Things get a little close there. We're going to go side by side so you'll see it all right here on Fox.
Nine laps to go in stage number two. Last time by Ryan Newman, fastest car on the racetrack, 202.3, our Xfinity fastest lap. Fastest lap of the race, Eric Jones at 206 miles per hour. That is fast. I mean, to just run lap after lap over 200 miles per hour. And, and we're seeing some handling become an issue. So it's not as if they're just planted into the racetrack. You're 202 miles per hour sliding the back of the car around like we've seen Ryan Blaney and a few others do. I mean, it looks to me, guys, like turns three and four where the sun is still on the racetrack is where these guys are struggling. And like when we look at Kyle Larson right now, he's not staying tucked up tight to that car in front of him. And that tells me when he gets close, his car's probably just not driving as well as he needs it to. Yeah, he's just trying to get a little bit of air to the nose and on his car to push it into the racetrack. Three Toyotas and four Chevrolets at the head of the pack. The first Ford is Blaney in ninth with his teammates. How about Ross Chastain? Oh man, this is awesome to see Ross Chastain up there. He must be having a blast. Tommy Baldwin is crew chief, a former Daytona 500 winner. This is only Chastain's fourth start at Daytona. Finished 10th here. Last year, his only top 10 on the super speedways. Joe Gibbs Racing won the Daytona 500 last year. They have three of the top five right now. And they have very fast race cars. They've been in control of this race here recently. But you got to look down at Eric Jones in 21st. All it takes is one little bobble on pit road to get you behind. And now you see how difficult it is to try to get back to his teammates. He's there drafting off Ryan Priest. Now here's the Hendrick Chevy running order. Jimmy Johnson, Chase Elliott in the top 10. Alex Bowman a little further back. And William Byron was crashed out of the race on lap 60. Team Penske for the captain. Ryan Blaney, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano all in close proximity here in their Mustangs. Chris Busher amongst them new to the Roush Fenway team in the 17. And you saw right there Joey Logano right behind the 17 had a little bobble going into turn three. These guys are wanting some adjustments and four fresh tires pretty soon, which is going to happen in about five laps. Stuart Haas running order. Larry, are they doing what the Toyotas did earlier back there near 30th place? Mike, I'm just concerned how far they have fallen behind. They're over 16 seconds behind the leader. At one point, I felt like that they may try to go down a strategy of pitting before they close pit road. Remember, they closed pit road with two to go before the stage in, and they would get that track position. But I'm almost afraid they're too far back to do that right now. Yeah, now we, the strategy is nothing about anything but what puts you in a position to win the Daytona 500. Yeah, and to stay out of any incident that might happen at the end of this stage. We heard the urgency on Kyle Busch's uh, radio and his voice when they were at the back of the field, and he said, we got to go, we got to go. And I think a lot of it was managing that gap that we're not seeing right now happen with those Fords that are at the tail. 37 of 40 cars still on track. B.J. McLeod has joined Quinn Half and William Byron out of the race. 35 of them on the lead lap with 74 to go. Guys, I think this is a great opportunity for Ricky Stenhouse, Kyle Busch, Martin Tricks to plan out what they might do if they're in the same position at the end of the race when, when the big trophy's paid out. I think you're absolutely right, Jamie. They're going to position their car, maybe back up to that car behind them, see if they can get a big enough run where if they wanted to make that move, they might not make it at the end of the stage because it might be too risky, but they might just be able to learn something, as you mentioned, that wins them the Daytona 500. Kurt Busch told me yesterday he doesn't need a partner to pull out to pass. He just has to time it right to get to change lanes and get in front of the next car that's coming. 
to give him a push. You don't need a partner to dance, but boy, it sure helps if you have one. Well, you got to have some things go on that allows that to materialize. You can't just do it by yourself. You certainly can't do it from eighth or ninth or tenth. Twelfth place here, Ty Dillon, Joey Logano, Chevy and Ford. Seven cars, single file on the inside. It'll be one lap to go in stage two as they cross the line. It will be interesting to see if Stenhouse can materialize a run if he wants to go after that stage win. Will he make that move late in this lap? The stage winner gets a playoff point that carries all the way through to the penultimate race of the season. Which, with four drivers vying for the Bill France Cup Boy, some, in Phoenix. Some real side drafting going on further back between Jimmy Johnson and Ryan Blaney. Oh, there's that run right there. Look at Stenhouse getting to the left rear of the 11. Trying to get inside Hamlin, who hugs the white line. Drifts up one car with Stenhouse to the outside. Hamlin up to block. Kyle Busch to the bottom with Hamlin, who wins stage two. Got pretty exciting right there off of turn four. Denny Hamlin holds off all comers. Denny Hamlin, two foot one. Denny Hamlin, your stage two winner over teammate Kyle Busch. In just five days, don't miss the most anticipated title fight in years. Undefeated heavyweight champ Deontay Wilder takes on 29-0 Tyson Fury in the rematch the sports world's been waiting for. Saturday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Buy it now on pay-per-view or the Fox Sports app. Matt.
Ambient temperature down 10 degrees. Martin Truex Jr. says he pokes the left front out to try to help, but the car just gets way too tight, Regan, late in the run. Smooth sailing for the leader, Denny Hamlin, on the right side of your screen. His race car just a little bit free right now. That means the back wants to slide out. Vince? The 18 of Kyle Busch likes his car. It's just going to be four tires and gas. As for Ricky Stenhouse Jr., pretty loose late in that run and turns three and four. There's the race off pit road. Timmy Hill, gas only. But problems for Martin Truex. Big problems. See Martin pull out of his pit stall and nails a gas can that somebody must have pulled out of their pit stall with them when they left. <laughs> Martin, good job trying to navigate around that. Did, that. did that do any damage, though, to the nose of that 19 car? That's the question. And then who does that belong to? What do you say we uh, dial up our stage two winner? Hey, Denny, this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Hey, Denny, Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Yeah, I got you. Well, congrats, man. Uh, wow, you guys are looking strong. You really have uh, control of this race. So. How's it feeling? It certainly looked like everything's going your way to try to get a third Daytona 500 win. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're, with us lined up there, it looked like our lap times were good enough to where it, it really didn't matter how many cars were on top. Uh, we, we were able to control the race on the bottom. Uh, so as long as we continue to be able to run that lap time on the bottom, I, I, you know, it'll be tough. But um, we'll see. we got our teammates here mixed up a little bit. So we'll see how it all plays out. All right, well, thank you for talking to us. Good luck the rest of the way. Good work. Denny Hamlin, stage two winner. Someone has a penalty coming for removing equipment from the pit stall. There you see Chase Elliott, and there goes that gas can that Martin Truex sent a ways down pit road right there. So we're under caution at the end of stage two. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by KFC. It's finger licking good. End of stage two. Another look here at Chase Elliott's pit stop. Where he leaves the pit. With the fuel can attached. And uh, drops it on pit road right in front of 
An on-rushing Martin Truex at the top of your screen. Now, no penalty on Truex, although Martin did stop for the team to look over and make sure there was no damage. So he'll end up starting toward the back. And uh, there's a look at the front end. Looks pretty good. I mean, when I saw how hard he hit the gas can, I thought for sure it's going to do some damage. But looks pretty good. You know, that alignment on that gas can when the, when the gas man has made the connection, it's, it's a pretty tight connection. And so when that car starts to take off, if you haven't been able to disengage, it's pretty easy for it to get caught in there, which is exactly what happened to the nine Chase Elliott that time. So Elliott will restart tail end, and we're told so will Kevin Harvick, who pitted too soon before pits were open. Sixty six laps to go. Denny Hamlin's Toyota and Ryan Blaney's Mustang. Blaney has his teammate Joey Logano in row two. Hamlin's teammate Kyle Busch also in the second row. So Hamlin has elected the outside with Kyle Busch right behind him. Puts Blaney on the inside with Logano. And then in the third row, Stenhouse and Johnson in Chevrolets. Then Ross Chastain and Chris Buescher. Here they come to the Geico restart zone to begin the third and final stage of the 62nd Daytona 500. Things are about to heat up right here, Mike. This is it. This is what they've been waiting for. Congratulations to those guys up front that have put themselves in position to try to control the end of this race. Teammates Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano going to the front. 22, 47 are both clear. 22 is going to get a shot for the 47. Here he comes. 20, 15, 10. He is clear. Whenever he goes, 5. Right with you. With that push coming from Ricky Stenhouse Jr., those three broke away. See Ricky, evasive move to the outside lane, trying to keep those Toyotas behind him. Boy, Denny Hamlin really had to check up as he got to the rear bumper of Joey Logano. Allow Stenhouse to go to second. Whoa. Big aggressive side draft by Ricky Stenhouse to try to take the lead. And look who's with him, Ross Chastain. In the 77, then Keselowski in the two. Man, what a job Ross Chastain is doing today. Boy, Denny Hamlin had a huge run coming down the front straightaway in the tri-oval. Joey Logano put a big block on him. Stenhouse trying to be Three lanes wide to control this Daytona 500. Two Here forwards after him. The Here inside. they go. He's not yep. going to be able to block that big of a run. Now he's got to get up and try to keep Joe, uh, Denny Hamlin behind him if he can. Another big run coming. You saw Denny Hamlin get to the rear bumper of Stenhouse. Look at Stenhouse pushing the 22 right to the rear bumper of the 12. Well, these bumpers are getting a workout right now as we close this Daytona 500 out. And we might find out just whose bumpers line up the best, which cars can lock bumpers and find extra speed. We know how good those Fords can, can push. Joey Logano got left alone. Joey Logano shuffled out by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now remember that sun is setting, track tips going down. The grip's going to go up. These guys ought to be more aggressive. Here comes a big run. 95 of Christopher Bell. Bell coming up to Logano on the outside. Trying to bring that lane back up toward the front. There goes Stenhouse Whoa. to the outside of Ryan Blaney. He wants the lead. 
And Hamlin's coming with him. He had to check up a little bit. They almost got together and caused a wreck. Blaney on the bottom with Kyle Busch now and Jimmy Johnson. Big side draft Stenhouse to the right rear quarter panel. Blaney, here comes a push from Denny Hamlin. On the inside, a big push is coming from uh, Kyle Busch. Look what happened. Look how much more speed they have. That's what, four or five miles per hour more speed when they lock bumpers. Something happened to Stenhouse going into turn three. That car got squirrely and backed up, and he lost the lead. Now he's coming back on the outside. <laughs> and Blaney is up to block. Here comes Denny Hamlin to the outside. Boy, this might be trouble for Ricky Stenhouse Jr., but Eric Amarola might be his saving grace. Here goes Joey Logano to his teammate Ryan Blaney. Man, three wide. Look at four rows deep, three wide. <laughs> Kyle Busch going to go up and try to block that outside lane with his teammate. Well, that leaves the middle open for the 12 of Blaney, the 22 of Logano, and the Chevrolets have the inside all to themselves. Yeah, but now look in that outside lane. You got four Toyotas lined up bumper to bumper. You think it's going through Jimmy Johnson's mind what's on the line right now is last Daytona 500. Toyota's lost a little bit of help as Brad Keselowski jumps down to that inside lane. I think this is Denny Hamlin doing a little test run, locking bumpers with his teammate. Remember, that's legal in, in the Cup Series. You can do that. You can push these cars as long as the water tip can handle it. You can push. But I just wonder if those guys, if that was Denny testing that out, if he could be in that position on that final lap, that might allow them to separate themselves from the field. 58 laps to go and at least one pit stop. Race fans, instead of going to a commercial break, we're going to stay right here and go Toyota all out. Well, now that four of those five Toyotas, three from Joe Gibbs and the Levine family racing car right here of rookie Christopher Bell, now that they have found each other, that's not great news for the rest of this field. No, it isn't. And I'll tell you something else. you got defending champion Kyle Busch leading this field, finished second last year's Daytona 500, but he has never won this race. He's got himself in position, and he has his teammate, yes, but one of the most savviest drivers on the super speedways Denny Hamlin right behind him now their teammate Martin Truex Jr. had that problem running into the gas can on pit road had to restart out back so he's back in 35th as the other four run out front here but we saw where teammates of Eric Jones and Christopher Bell somewhat of a teammate to these uh, Joe Gibbs racing cars they fell back look at how they've done such an excellent job working their way back up into the top four one week ago Hamlin pushed the damaged car of Eric Jones to the clash win love this shot of Kyle Busch got that clear shield on his helmet right now he's pretty calm I think he feels pretty content but look at those eyes looking in the mirror even in the middle of the corner As we continue with Toyota All Out, here's a special treat for the Rowdy fans. The world TV premiere of Toyota's Sign the Line with NASCAR champion Kyle Busch.
54 laps to go, and Kyle Busch leads the Daytona 500 from Denny Hamlin. Hamlin has never won the NASCAR championship. Kyle Busch has never won the Daytona 500. This Toyota's won, what was it, like 19 races last year? Already showing a lot of strength here in 2020. Don't forget, though, we're going to have to have another pit stop to get to the finish. That could shake things up. A lot of work going on between those Fords back there, led by Brad Keselowski trying to get to the outside of them. Larry, Guys, Jamie, I'm what do we expect if we get this pit stop under green? Well, I was just asking Larry the same question, and I looked over, and he looks like an unprepared accountant on the eve of April 15th. He's punching <laughs> numbers, and there is paper flying everywhere. What are you working on, Larry? Well, here's what I think will happen. Again, this, this final stage is almost like two full fuel runs. So right now we're at lap 147, which is 53 laps to go. The window will open somewhere around lap 160 to 162, which is about 38 to 40 to go. If I'm one of those Toyota crew chiefs, that's the format I'm going to go with. You can run to about lap 166 to 168, but I think especially for those four up front, when it opens, Jamie, Mike, and Jeff, come the minute that window opens. So we can expect pit stops in about 12 laps. And it will be the money stop if this Daytona 500 goes green all the way to the finish. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Coca-Cola, a premier partner of the NASCAR Cup Series. And by Toyota, let's go places. Coming to 48 laps to go, Fords have surged out front. Let's have a look at today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Two-time series champion and defending champion Kyle Busch has eight victories here at Daytona in multiple series, but never the Daytona 500. Today, I think he lifts the Harley J. Earl Trophy. Jeff, anytime you come to Daytona or Talladega, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is always the one to watch. If he can just keep a bridle on that thing for a number more laps, he may get his first Daytona 500 win. 
Well, I got my eyes on the 12 car of Ryan Blaney. He finally got to the front with a teammate, and we know how good Ryan is at the end of these races. His car is a very good pusher right now. Guys, I got my eyes on Clint Boyer. We haven't heard much from Clint today because you know what? He has a plan. His plan is to manage his race. He's going to stay in the back and stay out of trouble. The biggest reason, though, I'm watching him is because if he wins the race today, our very own Jeff Gordon has to interview him with the Kansas Jamie, City Chiefs jersey no. on. <laughs> Everybody knows how aggressive Joey Logano is on super speedways. Anybody who doesn't know is likely to find out on the last lap. Those are our Credit One Bank ones to watch with uh, the Penske Fords of Brad Keselowski and Ryan Blaney leading here in Daytona. I thought Jamie McMurray was my teammate now. I can't believe he's pulling for Clint Boyer because of that jersey. Although I would like to see Clint Boyer win it. I'll do it. I'm a man of my word. He's got some work to do, though. Yes. Man, this race, what a race. Boyer's going to have to come from 29th. 35 cars on the lead lap, 46 to go. Saw Ryan Blaney, as we were setting up that feature, come through the tri-oval in a complete four-wheel sideways drift. If the handling goes like it did in that last stage, that's going to be hard to hang on to. Well, it, it hasn't slowed him down, though. We've been talking about, yes, he's had his hands full. We saw right there with a big bump draft to his teammate Brad Keselowski, but he hasn't checked up. Every time that car slides sideways, he's still wide open. Well, if you had a mirror full of Ricky Stenhouse, you'd be wide open too, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, listen, if you want a good pusher, that's your guy, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., but you better hold the wheel straight. Denny Hamlin's Coke cam showing us Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski. Big push coming. Christopher Bell to the rear bumper of Denny Hamlin. Now that push goes right to the rear bumper of Kyle Busch. Boy, the, the push is just getting more and more aggressive. It's got to make you nervous, but at the same time, that's what you have to do in the closing laps of this race. Best drivers in America, two abreast, 200 miles per hour. I, I wish, Mike, I could explain to you. Whoa, you see Denny Hamlin move up the racetrack, has to check up a little bit. I wish I could explain to you what is going on inside that car right now because these guys are gripped to the steering wheel, holding on tight, but they're not lifting the throttle. To do that takes so much skill. Saw a big move right there. Now Joey Logano to the rear bumper of his, his teammate, Brad Keselowski, one, two, three, Penske. That didn't work out so well in the clash here last weekend when Keselowski blamed Logano's aggressive move on Kyle Busch for taking all three of them out of the race. Penske Fords in front of the field with 43 laps to go in the Daytona 500.
no. Shit. Here's the progressive race summary with 100 miles to go. Brad Kozlowski, one of 11 leaders, 16 lead changes, 35 lead lap cars. We've had five caution flags, counting the two stage breaks, and 23 caution laps. Ricky Stenhouse made an aggressive move in the back straightaway as they were all three wide. Here it is as he goes to pass the 12 of Ryan Blaney and watch Stenhouse and the yellow line. Yeah, he gets a big run, he goes to the inside. I think the 12 of Blaney moved down slightly and I think the 47 of Stenhouse trying to avoid him, but when you go below that yellow line, you cannot continue on and keep and, and, well, and make that pass happen. Unless you are forced down there, and we saw Blaney move to the left a bit, it's up to NASCAR to make a judgment call. My, my experience is unless that car is slamming you in the door below the yellow line, they're gonna call that, and I believe they just have on Ricky Stenhouse. So our pole sitter, Ricky Stenhouse, who's led 24 laps here today, will have to come to pit road to serve that penalty, Vince. Well, and they told Ricky that he was being penalized. Ricky said, I was either going to crash him or not. Had to make that choice to go below the yellow line, in his opinion. And, and it's easy to have that argument. I understand, you know, when you're carrying that speed and they make that move that you could say you're being forced. But honestly, I've just never seen NASCAR call it any different than that unless somebody was body slamming you Larry and guys he's got to serve a pass through penalty and the window is open but when you serve a pass through penalty you can't stop and service your car so he's going to have to make two trips to pit road one for the penalty and one soon for his green flag stop yeah, and the other thing he's got to do Larry is be really careful get below that yellow line as he comes to pit road he did a nice job tough break for our pole sitter arguing he was forced below the yellow line, but as Jeff has explained, NASCAR has been very consistent with this call. Well, they always say, don't force us to have to make that judgment. Logano out front, Keselowski on the outside lane. Logano picks up his Penske teammate, now leaves him as Jimmy Johnson right behind. And here's Chase Elliott coming up the inside, rebounding from that penalty. Both he and Jimmy Johnson uh, have come back from penalties today. You can come back from them once, right. but you can't come back from them too late in this race, which is what we're going to find out with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Where'd all those Toyotas go? Those guys were dominating this race. Good point, and, Kyle and Busch. They've been shuffled back. Yeah, you see Kyle Busch, the, the first Toyota there, what is he, about eighth or ninth? Bush is eighth, Hamlin 11th, Jones 15th, Bell 17th, and Truex never recovered. He's back in 32nd. So we're in the fuel window with 36 laps to go. Tonight on Fox, beginning at 8 p.m., see all new episodes of 911, Lone Star, and Prodigal Son. Boy, it makes me so nervous, Mike, when we're two by two like this and we're getting ready to make a green flag stop. That's when drama usually kicks in and somebody makes some kind of evasive move or does something aggressive that usually brings out the caution. So be curious to see how they navigate this. I don't think I want to be the first one to make a green flag stop. Well, we saw that on Thursday. Ryan Blaney uh, didn't realize all the Fords were pitting. He got himself into an accident, had to go to a backup car during the qualifying race. Little activity on pit road as Joey Logano tries to keep the field at bay. Cup champion, Daytona 500 winner, and one of the most aggressive. Well, somebody that's been real aggressive is his teammate, Brad Keselowski, behind him. We saw the last time through three and four. Brad Keselowski all over the rear bumper of that 22 car, trying to give him a push. Here comes another push. These guys make it look so easy, I promise you folks, it is not. 
When you see that car coming, you just hold that wheel as straight as you can. When you're in the banking, there's nothing you can do. You just hope the grip of that banking holds the car. Jimmy Johnson, third in his final Daytona 500. Alex Bowman, the only Hendrick Chevy not to have problems today, is right on the back bumper of the seven-time champion. Yeah, nice patient run for really both of these guys, but for Alex Bowman, we've not talked a lot about him after starting on the front row, but he just quietly is finding his way towards the front of this race at the right time. Larry McReynolds, we're well into the fuel window. Get nervous? Well, Mike, I mean, they, they will definitely have to come here in about the next three, four, five laps. So evidently they've decided to take this as far as they possibly can and just maybe come for fuel only on this final trip to pit road. Boy, that's going to mean dodgy handling in the last few laps for some of the cars we've been we've seen sliding up the banking in the corners on worn tires. Well, and remember, Mike, we've already seen this week in the duels poor communication. If you don't allow the teams around you to know you're pitting, hand signals, radio communication. We talked about instant messaging happening on pit road. We can see disaster strike coming to pit road under green. We see the Toyotas go to the inside, turns three and four. Actually, that was a nice pass by Kyle Busch going by Alex Bowman. I was just wondering maybe they were coming to pit road. Not this time. Now Jimmy Johnson goes to the outside of Keselowski, but no help. Now Bowman is a car length, now half a length back. Now here comes Bowman to give Johnson the big push as they come to turn one. Wow, both Bowman and Kurt Busch closed up on Jimmy Johnson in a hurry. They were two, three car lengths back when Jimmy made that move. Pretty good indication anybody in that outside lane right now not coming to pit road. Are we going to see some action from anybody on the inside lane? This time here outside. Oh, oh, here they come. Here. There you go, buddy. Are they coming too fast to make it down to pit road speed limit? Logano, Kozlowski hard on the brakes. Matt. And Jake Seminara goes around the right side to hit the right rear. Hunter Massing's on the front. The second can's going in. They're only going to do two tires on the 22, Regan. Denny Hamlin's been quiet for the majority of the night until he got in that heavy traffic. The race car was too tight in that heavy traffic. Vince. The two of uh, Keselowski, right sides and two cans of fuel. They'll go on the crew chief, Jeremy Bowles. Most everyone getting right side tires. As this group peels off, the first 14 cars did not pit. And most of those stay out. Now remember something that played out the other day also in the duels. We saw cars get single file and run some of their fastest laps of the race to try to make up time for when these green flag stops happen. Let's see if these guys can now draft off of those cars that just came off pit road before they come to green to get fuel and tires. 48 Johnson at Ally Chevy is your leader from Bowman, Kurt Busch, Ty Dillon, Ryan Priest, Austin Dillon. It's 10 Chevrolets out front. Yet to make their stop. This late in the race, the pit stops matter now more than ever for Kevin Harvick and for you. Keep tweeting hashtag pit for Bush and hashtag sweepstakes for your chance to win a Bush wrapped sports car right now. The first 13 cars have yet to make this final stop. 12 Chevrolets and Timmy Hills four. Treble turn four. One car. Stenhouse. Stenhouse Jr. No caution. We stay green as Stenhouse makes it to pit road with a lot of damage there. And several cars choose to pit, including Chase Elliott, Tyler Reddick, 
Ross Chastain is in. Brendan gone on pit road. As we continue under green, Ryan Priest is in as well. There's Chastain stop. And this something Cole with Cole Custer. Custer. Was there some kind of contact between Cole Custer and Ricky Stenhouse Jr.? Well, they've got the hood down and in position on Stenhouse's car. He may be able to continue. Here comes Custer staying on track. And a good bit of smoke from behind his number 41 Ford. Yeah, these guys want to hit pit road before they close those pits in case the caution comes out. Matt? Jimmy Johnson was staying with those Chevys, and then he called an audible from the cockpit. Didn't know what to do, so he stayed out. They're looking for four tires here on the 48. Jamie? The Stenhouse spin definitely messed with the Chevy strategy. The one of Kurt Busch in his box. Four tire stop said the car is perfect right now, Regan. 88 car of Alex Bowman, you see him there taking four tires. He has been quiet on the radio this past run, happy with his race car. Contact from Eric Jones may have sent uh, Ricky Stenhouse spinning. There was no caution. And the field cycles around. Alex Bowman giving up the lead after his pit stop. Oh, here comes Jones. Uh, Whoa, huge run. We talk about communication, and Eric Jones had no idea that the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was coming to pit road. And there's Jimmy Johnson, the 48 on the inside. Wasn't sure if he should come to pit road or not. Gave up the lead and pitted the next time by. Yeah, it looks like he was planning to come, and they waved him off. The issue here for Cole Custer had nothing to do with the Stenhouse incident. Kyle Busch is the race leader. Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, Chris Buescher, a Toyota, and five Fords right behind him. Joey Gay slips onto pit road, and so does the 20 of Eric Jones. Well, it's just, you know, bad timing for Eric Jones. He had a big run, dove to the inside of a car, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was just right in front of him getting on the brakes to come to pit road. Nowhere to go for Eric Jones. Remember, uh, I'm going to get that jersey pressed and ready because Clint Boyer, who was 29th, <laughs> Jeff, is now up to fifth place. I believe I see it hanging up over there in the corner, Mike. 25 laps to go in the Daytona 500. Time for our Wendy's pit stop. Jamie and Michael had their own on-track rivalry as they battled for some Wendy's breakfast. Then there was an epic egg race that led to an unconventional delivery cart dash, which led to Wendy's breakfast baconators for the winners. Everybody wins on March 2nd when Wendy's breakfast rolls out nationwide. Well, we talked about how a green flag pit stop can change the whole race and the complexion of it. We saw where some took four tires, some took two tires, really a split up these groups. The four tire group are 15th on back, four seconds back of the leaders with two tires. We're side by side.
With 20 laps to go in the Daytona 500, here's how the Coca-Cola family of drivers are faring. Joey Logano in second place. Denny Hamlin, Ryan Newman top 10. Austin Dillon, Bubba Wallace still on the lead lap. Now the group of 15 cars that uh, took two tires on the last pit stop has been almost a second slower than the group from 16th on back that got four tires and are closing right in. Let's have a look at those Ram fastest pit stops. It will be, of course, the two tire stops that were faster, uh, led by your nemesis, Clint <laughs> Boyer. Need I remind you what's at stake here? Uh, Jeff promised that if Boyer won the race, Jeff would interview him wearing this beautiful Chiefs jersey. Well, they've got to survive this four wide racing that's going on right now. And I got to say, I think right now I'm going to want four tires, not two tires, because business is picking up. Kyle Busch gets shuffled. Kyle Busch shuffled back to 16th. The four tire group was led by Ross Chastain and Jimmy Johnson. Oh, got and it's trouble with the 18 for the defending NASCAR champion Kyle Busch. Vince. They came on the radio and told Kyle Busch he had a tire rub. That was the issue coming to pit road. Well, I don't see. Well, he's down fenders. on the apron in turn one, Jeff. That's a long way around. It sure is. You got to be really, really careful if it is a tire rub that you don't tear that tire apart. A lot of times we see these tires go down. If they've rubbed, they'll actually shred into pieces. Up front. Ryan Newman, Brad Keselowski, two Fords side by side from different teams. Eric Almirola's Ford. We Christopher saw, Bell, the rookie in Toyota. Well, we saw Ryan Newman up front at the beginning of this race. We have not seen it since then, but 18 laps to go, now 17. He's right in the mix of this, a former Daytona 500 winner. He knows how to get it done. The 2008 winner, Newman, battling for the lead. And uh, let's see if there's contact for Kyle Busch. This is Joey Logano right behind him. Trouble. Hey, Greg. Here's the big one. Man. Well, there goes half the field. Sure does. And it's Ryan Newman leading them around. Oh, Jimmy Johnson's Jimmy Johnson. hopes in his final Daytona 500. Kurt Busch, another former Daytona 500 winner. Brad Keselowski trying to win it for the first time. All torn up. Bubba Wallace, Eric Almirola, one of the fastest forwards in this entire field. And here's Martin Truex who couldn't get back to the lead pack and gets all torn up. Smoke out yeah, the that's exhaust not pipe. not a tire problem for no. the 18 of Kyle Busch. We are, of course, under caution with 15 to go. Watch the outside line here, Jeff. You can see Joey Logano really aggressive to the rear bumper of the 10. He's going to push him all the way up to the 2. And they just, right before the 10 gets there, there's a little bit of movement. And that little bit of movement, when you make that much contact, turns your car right around. That's exactly what happened to Brad Keselowski and the 10 of uh, Amarola. And that happens right in front of most of the field. And that really all started with a big push from Joey Logano. Remember Joey Logano talking on the radio earlier about you got to tell me when I'm pushing that car and it's going to make contact with the car in front of us. Well, that happened right there with his teammate. Here's our Ford onboard camera with Logano. You could hear he started to lift, but unfortunately Amarola's car started sort of swaying back and forth right before he made contact with the two. Hooks his bumper, turns him around. Oh, he slammed Alex Bowman. And then it's on. And for the second time in less than a handful of years, Eric Almarola ends up being knocked out of a good chance to win the Daytona 500.
We hear it they, on board with Austin Dillon. He even downshifted, trying to get that car slowed down enough to avoid this accident. Riding with Jimmy Johnson, our Chevy cam. Oh, just gets slammed. One of the cars loses control. I think that was Mark Truex Jr. Came down, made heavy contact with Jimmy on the right side. Was it a question of if or a question of when? I think it was just a question of when. I mean, it, it, you knew it was going to happen. That group caught that other group. They're going to race really hard to gain that track position. We saw so much bump drafting going on. We're getting down to the end of the Daytona 500. Nobody's going to lift in that situation. We are under the red flag. Cars are stopped on the back stretch, and work has stopped among the cars that are on pit road. And there's our AMR safety team attending to Brad Keselowski. Uh, reports from our cameramen are that all drivers whose cars are stopped are out of their cars. And Brad surveying the damage. One of four top drivers with more than 10 Daytona 500 starts, trying to win it for the first time. Well, Mike, I mean, it's, it's a product, you know, of the bump drafting that goes on. We talk about blocking. I don't think anybody was trying to block. It was just trying to get those lanes moving. These cars close up so fast. Here's another look at this. Yeah, watch these three cars right here. You've got Joey Logano, who's locked onto the rear bumper of Eric Almarola. There's gonna be a big shove here. And you see the back of the car already moving right as he gets to the rear bumper of the two of Brad Keselowski. All it takes is the slightest amount of sideways motion to get that two car of Keselowski turning sideways. Really, I mean, Eric Almarola is basically the meat between the sandwich there. He's, he's getting pushed from Joey Logano. He's going up to the rear bumper. He has no choice but to bump draft the two. All Brad can do is try to hold the steering wheel straight. I mean, this is just a, aggressive racing in the end of this race. Ross Chastain was having such a great day. Bummer to see him get caught up in that. And I'm not sure his day is over. Minimal damage, it appears, to his car. That's a good we'll point, see once Mike. they get him back to pit road. Uh, John or Hunter Nemechek has made it back to the pits. No work allowed under the red flag. Alex Bowman is back to pit road. We saw David Reagan coming back from retirement to make a Daytona 500 uh, attempt again. And Saw him get involved in that also. If I'm going to pick one driver besides the retired Bobby Allison to pick his way through an incident, yeah, it's Kevin Harvey. You're ready for any to come back up across the track. I can't see a damn thing with the dirt. See anything. Phenomenal job. I mean, he was in a great position to be a little bit further back, to be able to get slowed down. The seas parted as Kevin Harvey came right there. And I'm, that's what I'm talking about, Mike. It's things like that that have to happen for you if you're going to win the Daytona 500. Right there was definitely something that Kevin Harvick said, all right, right now things are on our side. I once asked Bobby Allison, who, the Hall of Famer, who I know is home watching our telecast tonight, how do you miss all those wrecks? He says, I aim for where they are. They're not going to be there when I get there. <laughs> well, I think uh, there was a movie that was made 30 years ago with a, a statement similar to that. Days of Thunder. <laughs> yes. Let's watch Clint Boyer in the 14 work his way through this in uh, black and gold, top of your screen, fifth car back. Now sixth car back, and here he comes. Unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable he made it through. And almost to Benedetto clipped him on the way by. Here's what Boyer had to say about that. Yeah, how'd you do that? I don't know, that was close though, boy. Woo! We're a uh, sixth, and a bunch of cars are torn up, man. I mean, a bunch. Might be eight or ten of us that aren't hurt. I was peed up with a two, and it just, he stayed up. Neil Bonnet won a Firecracker 400 here one July. He passed three cars in turn three on the last lap and said, how'd you do that? 
He said, man, did it all with my eyes closed. <laughs> Here are the cars involved in that crash. We're not yet sure who might be able to continue. We'll know that after they lift the red flag. What do you say we dial up, Clint Boy? <laughs> That's always see entertaining. What he has to say. Hey, Clint, this is Jeff up in the booth. You got me, buddy? Got you, man. Hey, I'm pulling out this jersey, getting it warmed up after seeing you thread the needle through that accident right there. Uh, you got to be feeling pretty good about your race car and that you made it through that big one. Probably more so getting through that big one, man. I had him beat up. Brad was backwards sliding, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Barely missed him, but, uh, you know, according to plan, you hate to ride in the back, but you know it's coming. you got to give yourself a chance. I said it from day one since I got here. Survival, survival, survival. It's go time now. Gloves are off. Time to go. Well, and we saw you did kind of play out that strategy. You were in the back early on in this race, but right now I got, I got to believe you're pretty happy with the position you're in. What is it going to take? I mean, is it going to take more things like that, or what kind of move can you make? Who can help you to get to the lead and try to win this Daytona 500? Well, I think a couple things led to that wreck. Honestly, it was, uh, you know, at the end of the race, things start to compress, but two tires. Everybody was slip sliding around and had their hands full. be interesting to see what everybody does here uh, after the caution, being that there's so few cars left. But uh, we're one of them, baby. Get that jersey ready. You're going to need it. <laughs> well, you're putting on a heck of a show, man. Thanks for talking to us. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, boys. All right, let's go to the Advent Healthcare Center and Regan Smith. Well, Kurt Bush, the first to emerge from the Advent Healthcare Center. Kurt, know that that was a big wreck in front of you there. Was there anything you could have done different? Nah, couldn't have done much different. It was, you know, 15 to go, and we're all racing hard. And uh, we ended up knocking the oil cooler out of it. Oh, it's not even worth watching, guys. For me, my guys prepared a really monster, really good Monster Energy Camaro. Um, the CO1 was fast. It was hooked up. I was able to go wide open. And on the inside lane, Lady Luck was not on our side. There it is. Boom. That's a roulette wheel, people. The roulette wheel spins, and it grabs your number. It grabbed my number. Maybe in Vegas will be a little better. All right, thanks, Kurt. Glad you're okay. Las Vegas next week, race number two of the NASCAR Cup Series. We're under the red flag for a grinding crash on the back straightaway. The Daytona 500 has 16 laps to go. Sixteen laps to go in the Daytona 500. We're under the red flag as they continue cleanup 
in the back straightaway from a multi-car incident. Let's go back to the care center, Regan Smith. Well, Brad Kozlowski standing here with me. Brad, we saw the push that Joey Logano gave Eric Amarola down the back straightaway. They got to your back bumper once they hit you too much to hold on to. Yeah, I just instantly spun out. Uh, I don't know. I, you know. I had the six car in front of me. I think I was about to push him and just uh, a lot of kind of kinetic energy there. But, uh, you know, I felt like we had a really good car. I made one mistake about a lap earlier, and the 95 was doing such a great job of pushing the six. I didn't think they'd have as strong a run as they did, and they just uh, – Got by me there on the bottom. I, I, I should have covered that better, and I didn't. So it's uh, it's my fault. I kind of put myself in position for that. But uh, it's a really good effort from everyone. Uh, discount Tire Ford team. I felt like we were right there. We led a lot of laps. We were certainly in position at the end, and uh, just not quite strong enough. Did you have any clue that they were coming with that big of a run from from Joey as well as Eric Amaral right there, or was it just pretty much nothing you could do? Well, I knew the ten was coming, and the six threw a pretty good block, and um, you know we were closing in on them is just it's a lot of energy when you got three or four of them you know it uh, it adds up quick all right thanks for talking to us Brad Kozlowski led 30 laps today there is Al Marola's car awaiting a push to get back to pit road they're going to refire the cars and once the caution flag is displayed they'll be allowed to work on those cars and that work begins now and we, we talked to Clint Boyer and what a great job he did or get, getting lucky making it through that crash but I'd say the same thing about Hamlin thought Hamlin really did a nice job working his way through there and Logano so Logano Hamlin and Boyer just making it through before that hole closed up now we'd been talking about Kyle Busch and it turns out we saw that smoke from the exhaust pipe he does have engine issues but he is still running so uh, scoring uh, owes him a lap we're told he'll be allowed to pass the pace car and come around uh, so that his scoring is uh, correct with the rest of the field. That didn't sound good. He no? just went to start the engine up, and it did not sound good. I, th I think this is probably heading towards being Refire pretty terminal. Here. Okay. Can you get us a push? Saturday week three of the XFL heats up. Coach Bob Stoops leads Dallas against Seattle. Catch the action sports fans can't stop talking about. Saturday. 5 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. You could play football here right in the, they call it the ball field, the trioval grass between the racetrack and the pit road. And the coolest thing about that, Mike, is that those cars at speed, when they're in the draft, are going by that in one second covering that football field. So Kyle Busch will get a push to pit road with the electronic fuel injection on these cars. Oh, a lot of smoke yeah, He there. got it started, yeah. but... Uh, they have to go through a cycling procedure to get that car restarted. It's not as simple anymore, is it, as just hitting a switch or turning a key on your family car. Now, it makes you wonder, was Kyle Busch in a, a tight draft? Maybe the temperatures got really high. Did that lead to some of this issue that he's having? Cars on pit road. Jamie? Well, as you know, in the last stop, the 14 and Clint Boyer took two tires. He just told the team we were in big trouble from the start. I would love to have four if we have enough time. They're putting the right sides on, and it looks like Boyer will get his wish for fresh tires. Kyle Larson on the right of your screen getting four as well. Eric Almirola came down pit road with damage, cut down a tire, and dragged the frame all the way to his pit stall. 15 to go. And here's the Ram race off pit road. Harvick, Boyer, Larson, McDowell. Looks like five cars stayed out. Six, seven, eight, maybe ten lead lap cars did not pit. See Kyle Busch staying down on the apron. I think he knows that it's just a matter of time before he starts losing some fluids. That is not the purr of, of an engine running on all eight cylinders. It's the local mosquito abatement program, unfortunately. Um, Larry dropped a valve, rings. Everything. What do you think? 
It'll be the kitchen sink. 15 <laughs> laps to go in the Daytona 500. Who will win it? Almost everyone who came to Daytona this weekend came in pursuit of this, the Harley Earl Trophy, to etch their name on one of those plaques on the permanent trophy that stays here at Daytona and symbolizes the Daytona 500 winner. 15th try to win it for Kyle Busch. He has coasted into the garage after completing a lap or two under caution to get points ahead of those cars that were knocked out here. Said earlier in the week, he hopes to have 10 or 12 more chances at the 500. Well, we've seen some of the all-time greats take a long time to get that first win and only 500 win, but not going to happen today. Regan? Well, certainly one of the best Daytona 500 Ky Bush cars that Kyle Busch has ever had. Kyle, did it give you any hint that it was about to go? Um, no, I mean, just right there coming out of four when we were leading and guys were kind of switching from the bottom to the top. That's when I got warning that it was it was starting to go away, and then through the trial, well, it let go more, and that's when Logano was all over me, pushing me, and I couldn't get out of the way fast enough, you know. So um, overall, just uh, it's a shame, man. Really, really hate it for all my guys. Really hate it for Joe Gibbs Racing, and um, you know, you come off pit road after the final pit stop, and you're leading the thing. You know, that's kind of your shot to win, and all you got to do is make sure you can keep everybody else behind you. We've been in that spot, I don't know how many times, and. We'll just keep going down in history of figuring out new ways to lose it. I know of another guy that's done that before, and he's pretty popular. So, um, I don't know. It sucks to be in that conversation, though. We'll go on another year. Thanks for your time, Kyle. He was referencing Dale Earnhardt, who took 20 years of trying to win the Daytona 500. There are four of the drivers with 10 or more starts in this race, hoping to win their first 500. Pretty much only one of those guys are left in this race, Clint Boyer. I really thought today was the day for Kyle Busch. When he got out front and as fast as his car was, I thought today was going to be the day. So let's set the field for you. 22 cars are on the lead lap. Some of the favorites that are laps down include Alex Bowman and Martin Truex and Matt DiBenedetto one lap down, Eric Almirola, Eric Jones, Jimmy Johnson, Ricky Stenhouse two laps back. 
with 13 to go. Ryan Newman is your race leader. He's driving for Jack Roush, Roush Fenway Racing. The last time we ran the 500 on a Monday, Jack Roush was in victory lane with driver Matt Kenseth. Christopher Bell, the rookie, running second to Newman. What a day it has been for the rookie. Unbelievable. I mean, we know we're going to see great things out of this kid this year, but to start off the Daytona 500 the way he has, pretty impressive. Got to survive these next 12, what, or maybe 10 laps when we go back to green. Going to be a tough challenge. Well, guys, the trends are back in 2020. I know we don't have a lot of drivers left out there, but if you look at the last 10 Daytona 500s, the average of the last caution is lap 194 with six to go, eight times in the last 10. It's happened in the final 10 laps, and Mike and Jeff, six overtimes, including our last two trips here in February. So if the leader comes to the white flag and we are under green, the next flag ends the race. Otherwise, if a caution comes out and we get to the 200 lap distance, we would go to overtime and a green white checker. There are a lot of dark horses in the top 15 right now. Rookie Christopher Bell is one of them in second. Michael McDowell in ninth. Ryan Priest in 10th. Corey LaJoy 11th. Ty Dillon 13th. Reed Sorensen 14th. And still way too soon to pick a winner. So the Daytona 500, which has taken two days to run, has 12 laps to go to decide a winner. The President of the United States and the First Lady on hand to give the command and pace the field. Jimmy Johnson getting a penalty here early. Too many men over the wall. William Byron getting turned around by Ricky Stenhouse. Hard hit to the inside wall. William is okay, but first car out of the race. His teammate, Chase Elliott, would win stage one for Rick Hendrick, while Denny Hamlin for Hall of Famer Joe Gibbs won stage number two. Chase Elliott pulls the fuel can out of the pit box with him. Leaves it on the pit road where Martin Truex collected it and was unable to advance thereon. Ricky Stenhouse went below the line to make a pass and then ended up spinning off the front bumper of Eric Jones. Finally, Joey Logano in the yellow 22 gives Eric Almarola a push all the way up to the bumper of Logano's teammate Brad Keselowski who gets turned into the wall and it's on. The big one at Daytona in turn three. Mike, you could hear that little lift off the throttle pedal by Joey Logano just before the 10 car got to the rear bumper of Brad Keselowski. He knew that he had a lot of momentum being carried as uh, he was pushing the 10 of Eric Almarola. He knew he had to lift, probably hurt from his spotter. Okay, you're closing up on him really fast. Unfortunately, it just wasn't soon enough to keep that from happening. NASCAR's damaged vehicle policy allows the teams, five men, six minutes, to make repairs and get their car back out. That time has expired for Jimmy Johnson. He will not win this Daytona 500. Martin Truex also pushed to the garage. Here's Denny Hamlin's team. I'm going to see how this first couple of laps here play out. No, oh, thank you against yourself. You're the best guy out there, most decorated at these racetracks. Anybody out there, so don't second guess yourself, you yourself for a second. However, it turns out, it turns out. Let's find out. They will come to the green with 10 laps to go in the 62nd Daytona 500. Ryan Newman leads them toward turn one. With a push from Logano in the 22. Harvick right behind. Christopher Bell on the bottom with Chase Elliott and last year's winner, Denny Hamlin. Well, we talk about how well those bumpers line up on the Fords. Didn't line up so well down the back straightaway when that big one happened. But right now, Joey Logano locked onto the rear bumper of the six and Newman 
going to take the lead. Watch Denny Hamlin also. One of those very aggressive pushers. Big push to Chase Elliott as he gets to the rear bumper. Rookie Christopher Bell. Oh no, now Hamlin's going to go to the outside. Kind of leave uh, Chase Elliott hanging there. Hamlin slid up into a hole that wasn't there behind the four of Kevin Harvick. Now watch that lane start to surge forward with the big run because of that. The inside lane starting to lose some, some cars in it, so watch them go backwards here for a little bit. Chase Elliott going to the end, uh, to the middle, going to shuffle that rookie out. Clint Boyer in the 14 with Elliott. Single file at the front. Six cars trying to break away. Denny Hamlin to the outside of Kevin Harvick. Going to shuffle Kevin Harvick out now. Well, that was a power move by Denny Hamlin. Ford, Ford, Toyota, Chevy, Chevy. Ryan Priest up into the top five in the 37. Haven't seen him all day. No, we haven't. We know what his stats are, though, on these super speedways. Best average of anybody in the field. Eight to go. Oh! Crash in the back of the field. Eric Two Jones, cars piled up there. And Reed Sorensen. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, Timmy three. Hill. Timmy Hill who was 10th after the 20 laps run yesterday, and Reed Sorensen. And Caution is out with eight to go. Timmy Hill, who had said if they didn't make the Daytona 500 on Thursday, they would probably have to fold that team. And it looks like Alex Bowman has front end, oh boy, front end damage, damage from that. Well, we'll see, see how all this got started from our Goodyear aerial coverage. Bottom of your screen. Sorensen goes to the middle. A lot of sparks out of that yeah. car. I think he cut a tire down. Oh, it slid right up in front of Timmy Hill. Yeah, anytime you see that much, those types of sparks, it basically that tire has gone down and now a car is lower down and riding on something, some steel, maybe the track bar adjuster mount. Pretty hard hit for Sorensen into the wall there. Not exactly sure what ha oh. happened to Alex Bowman. And you saw David Reagan slipping by on the inside and in what may be his final 500. Going to try to get Timmy Hill back in this. Seven to go. All of these cars a lap or more down. After all this contact, Bowman two laps down. As they try to fix the right front of his car. Now as we look at what's happening up front, those two Fords that were locked together doing a good job pushing. Now they're going to get separated. One's going to have to pick the inside, or, you know, Newman's going to pick the inside or outside lane, so he'll have a Toyota and a Chevrolet behind him as pushers. Ryan Newman, your race leader, as Reed Sorensen crashes out with Timmy Hill.
six laps to go in Daytona. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Discover what's possible. Keep moving. Goodyear, more driven. So who are your friends out front there? Ryan Newman, Joey Logano, the two Fords, Denny Hamlin, the lone to Toyota, the Chevrolets of Kyle Larson and Ryan Priest. Well, obviously to Ryan Newman, he thinks Denny Hamlin's his friend because he chose the inside lane. He'll have Denny Hamlin, one of the most aggressive pushers, somebody with a very fast car behind him on this restart. Sixth is Ryan Blaney, seventh Chris Busher, eighth Michael McDowell, and ninth Kevin Harvick, all in Fords before the Chevrolets of Ross Chastain and Chase Elliott. I just, I like the position of both Joey Logano and Denny Hamlin, maybe even a little bit more towards Denny Hamlin, you know, defending winner of this race. He's so good on these tracks. We've seen how strong that car has been. I, even though Newman's got control of this restart, I just don't think Denny Hamlin is gonna stay on his rear bumper to the finish. We went back and looked for damage uh, on, on Alex Bowman's car. Turns out that was from the prior caution flag and crash. They were just coming around having made replacements and uh, trying to get him to the finish line here. How about Ryan Priest, the kid from Connecticut, had a great debut Daytona 500 last year, finished in the top dozen, third at Talladega last spring, former NASCAR modified champ. He's in fifth. Just ahead of him, defending 500 winner Denny Hamlin. Here's Hamlin's radio. Let him know he's got to stay tight here. Like, tight, tight, tight. But Priest. Priest in that car now. Tell him to stay tight. Whoever's behind him, get with that spotter. Just let him know. If we got to line up. If we don't line up, we're dead. I, I love the way Denny Hamlin's thinking. He knows what it takes to get that run. Now, of course, he wants that for himself, so he knows the tighter that those cars can maintain that gap between the bumpers, he wants those bumpers right closed up to one another because that's where the energy is going to come from. I think all these manufacturer alliances are now out the window. Your best friend is the car right in front of you or right behind you. I still think that move can be made without some help coming to the checkered flag, though, Mike. It'll be four laps to go. Newman Logano on the front row, green flag. Not a great start by Denny Hamlin right there. Excellent start by Joey Logano, timed it perfect. Logano with Kyle Larson in the 42 and Ryan Blaney in the 12. Here comes the bottom. Logano comes down to side draft. Boy, not a great start, but look at the way they connected through one and two. Denny Hamlin and Ryan Newman have taken off. Can they get too far out front? Remember, I, I talked about this earlier in this race. Denny Hamlin tested this same move out with his teammate Kyle Busch. But yes, I agree. I think they're going to get too far out. I just don't think they can push like this tandem for four straight laps. Can the cars behind him link up in a long enough draft to run down the lead duo with three laps to go? Well, Denny Hamlin's gonna give it everything he has to try to pull this off. I'm amazed that they've been able to stay hooked together this long. I just don't think it's gonna last. Chase Elliott peeks out. Logano says, no thanks, I'm going up the middle. Boy, Joey Logano got shot. Oh, there goes back. Denny Hamlin. He, he knows it's time. Watch these two stall out now as this big run from Ryan Priest comes from behind. Two to go. Boy, that was just textbook by Denny Hamlin. Can he put the block on? Oh, car. Oh, 77. Oh, God, right behind you. That was Ross Chastain, got down on the apron, turned him sideways up the racetrack. Straight into Ryan Priest. Chase we Elliott have involved. Another multi-car pileup. With two to go, we'll go to overtime. There's the Connecticut kid's car. Uh, Joey Logano. Logano's got a flat left rear and trouble on the right front. Ty Dillon stuck in the grass, no rear deck lid or spoiler. Well, that's a big hit by Ross Chastain. He wants to make it around to pit road to load the car. 
<laughs> I believe so. And Ryan Priest, that car won't steer. It's against the wall. Now Al Marola, that's prior damage. He just got back out there. And maybe a little current damage. Watch uh, 77 right here. Well, and you can, I knew those cars were going to stall out. You can see right there, Ryan Priest sort of pushes Chastain down onto the apron. As soon as it gets down the apron, he loses control. And heavy, heavy impact to the 22, Logano from Chastain. Car goes sideways. He tries to correct. You know, those, those kinds of impacts for Logano, it might not look as big of an impact as what we see some of these other cars because of the damage, but when you get right into the driver's side door and then the passenger side door goes in the wall, those hurt. That almost looks, Jeff, like the right rear went down with all those sparks and the car just just I, took off. I, I think the car, once he came up on the apron, the car just got a little sideways. He tried to correct, and it caught the banking and shot the nose over. I think Michael McDowell made it through with minimal damage. Ouch. See Christopher Bell go by with some damage. Let's ride with him and our Toyota cam. Ooh. Just nowhere to go. And we'll ride with Ross Chastain. And he had such a run. You really, at this stage in the race, you have no choice. You just can't lift. And there was only a half a car with of room there, and he tried to take it. He's made it to pit road. As the field circulates under yellow, teams are allowed to work on the cars. We're going to hear from Denny Hamlin's radio and Ryan Newman's. I would have kept pushing. I just ran out of temperature. Uh, no, I think that was perfect, my man. Fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. You can't do it when everybody expects you to do it, right? <laughs> Levin said he uh, ran out of temp. It was getting too hot. That's why he pulled off you. Uh, that's not why he pulled off. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either, but it makes a good, good excuse, right? Well, we, we knew he was going to pull off the rear bumper of Ryan Newman at some point. I just didn't know when. When you're hooked up to somebody's rear bumper like that tandem drafting, you're total control of that car leading. And, and it's so easy for you to just pull out and make that pass. And he did it, I mean, just perfectly. Right off the corner, he knows Newman's feeding the wheel to try to keep it on the bottom. There's absolutely nothing Ryan Newman can do. Now, where this worked out so well for, New, uh, for Hamlin, gets down in front of the six and really stalled out this whole lane, continued his momentum, although the 17 right there was going to the outside, maybe he's gonna make that pass. Chris Busher, heck of a move there to get to the outside. He might have taken the lead. Newman, both lucky and skilled to make it through without damage. That 34 McDowell with hardly any damage gets through. Uh, Clint Boyer undamaged, still in it in fourth place. Here's Regan. Well, Jimmy Johnson's attempt to win his third Daytona 500 came just a little bit short as you got caught up in the wreck two wrecks ago. How much has this race meant to you over the years? Yeah, it's been been really, uh, really a cool race to be a part of. I mean, you only dream of racing in races like this as a kid. Um, that yellow 22 car had been pretty aggressive all day long, and I just felt like it was a matter of time before uh, his pushes were a little much, and it uh, looks like that was the case there. But um, our ally Chevy was, was really strong. Um, hate that we were tore up in it, uh, but really excited about the races ahead of us. Uh, Cliff Daniels is doing a great job leading this team. Full support from Hendrick Motorsports, my family, my friends, my fans. Uh, just very thankful for all of that. And we didn't get the victory lane today, but uh, ready to get to Vegas and get to work out there. All right, thanks for the memories here, Jimmy. Seven-time champion Jimmy Johnson out of the 500. Here's Ty Dillon's car being hauled back by the wrecker. He had a great finishing record here in past 500s. And there are the cars that are left. 
Still 18 lead lap cars. With Denny Hamlin in Toyota trying to hold off five Fords right behind him. Chris Buescher, Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer, Ryan Newman, Ryan Blaney, then the first Chevrolet. Uh, that'll be Bubba Wallace who has a runner-up finish in the 500. He's the lead Chevy. And then Justin Haley, who won here last July, leading what, just the last lap? I, I think it was just the last lap and some rain short in that race. But, man, what a wild week it has been down here in Speed Week. Started with the clash, and we had a huge wreck there and a lot of blocking going on. This has been a very entertaining Daytona 500, and it wasn't really until this last stage as we wind down the Daytona 500 that the aggressiveness has just increased and the intensity has increased. I think they see that trophy right up there off the hood, and all of a sudden those pushes turn into shoves, turn into bangs, turn into wrecks. So when they clean up, we'll go to NASCAR overtime. I can't pick a winner, uh, Shannon, and boys in the studio. I think one of the record drivers, though, may have a good shot at it. All of our picks are already out the window, Mike. We are, we are done. Shannon Spake, Larry McReynolds, Jamie McMurray here in the Race Hub studios. Let's just talk about what we just saw on the racetrack, Jamie. We, we've seen these moves on the backstretch. That place has been a busy place today. This was coming off that backstretch stretch as that transition uh, starts to hit those race cars. Tell me what happened. Well, the, look, the move that Denny Hamlin made I thought was incredible of pushing Ryan Newman. And he, he said that the temperature got hot, which which I believe. Um, and he was able to get on the outside of Ryan. But we saw so many wrecks down the backstretch in the race today because that's where you can get locked bumpers yes. um, easiest. And I think it's hard to explain to the fans at home. But, like, when you see that guy coming, I heard Jeff say this inside the car you grab the steering wheel as tight as you can you kind of tense up and you hope that when they hit you that they hit you square enough that it just pushes you forward and doesn't get you sideways and what we saw with brad keselowski is that you know it just became more aggressive as the as the race gets to the end it's the daytona 500 yeah, i mean you're yeah. gonna be aggressive um, and that's what we expect to see from those guys and i don't think anybody was mad in that because that's fully what they expect to happen yeah the banking in the corner is 31 degrees but when you get down to that double yellow line and you get just below it it's not even close to 31 degrees when Rob Josh Chastain got down there and his left side tires got just below. You can see it right here. He's that that's much flatter than 31 degrees and he just shot him up the racetrack. He was at that point once he dipped down below that double yellow line kind of got forced down there. He, he was just along for the Affects ride. Affects the stability of the race car. Yeah and look we saw the in car from Ross Chastain. He was going about 10 miles an hour faster than everybody in front of him. He had a huge run. When Denny made the move on Ryan it stalled everybody out and the guys that were 10 car lengths back got big runs. Look it's the end of the day 2500. Ross Chastain saw a gap. There was enough room there it just closed up on him. My trends have not let me down though this is now the third consecutive Daytona 500 to have overtime maybe we should have him pick the winner Mike because obviously he knows what's going on right thanks Shannon the real question is are we done yet well NASCAR's rules now provide for overtimes as needed until we have a winner tonight on Fox all new episodes of 911 Lone Star and Prodigal Son once our race here is completed, biggest race of the season, Denny Hamlin knows the way to victory lane in 2016. Look at him on the outside of Martin Truex Jr. beating and banging all the way to the line in the closest 500 finish ever. And one year ago, here's Hamlin dropping to the inside. Joey Logano up there. Kyle Busch has to follow his teammate to the line as the Joe Gibbs Toyotas go 1-2 in last year's Daytona 500. I wonder, Jeff, Hamlin, with that move on Ryan Newman, did he show his move too soon? He may, he may very well have, Mike, because now he's going to be the leader. How is he going to prevent somebody from doing that exact same thing to him? But, uh, boy, he's been so strong, so strong. I think it's going to be extremely hard to beat Denny Hamlin. Coach Joe Gibbs, just inducted into NASCAR's Hall of Fame, started this race with four cars, has one left in the top 15. You ask the question, let's dial him up and ask him himself. Hey, Denny, this is Jeff and Mike up in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, four. What a move, man. That was pretty impressive to watch. You lock onto the rear bumper of Ryan Newman. But did you show your hand too early? Because now you're going to be leading this race. I like where I'm at. 
Um, I mean, I do like pushing, um, but you know, being able to control the line on the restart, uh, I think, is beneficial. And you know, thinking that another caution is coming, uh, and I was kind of limited there by temp, that uh, I need to make a move. So went ahead and tried to get the lead, and worked out. But uh, got a long, long way to go. Yeah, I hear you. Long way to go, and. Probably some more green-white checkers. I, I thought it was interesting on that last restart. Ryan Newman kind of got out there. Didn't think that you got the best restart. There was a gap. But when you finally closed that gap, I was impressed how you were able to lock on to him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've worked with Ryan before. Um, you know, obviously, Talladega last year with this package I locked on on, on the last lap. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we had a pretty good, pretty good hold there. Uh, I was just kind of limited uh, by temperature. So I had to, I had to make a move. Uh, so, and I saw the line coming, so uh, it all worked out. Well, thanks a lot. Good luck the rest of the way. And uh, we can't thank you enough for the incredible access to the leader of the Daytona 500 here as we close this thing down. We appreciate it. Denny Hamlin, your race leader, under red. Where else can you get this kind of Nowhere, access? Nowhere, Mike. You, it's you NASCAR. You're not going to get a golfer on the 18th green in the Masters. Come talk to you before he makes what would be the winning putt. But this is NASCAR. I mean, these in-car cameras, visor cameras, heartbeat monitors, radio access, and be able to actually dial them up is uh, it's unbelievable what we're able to do. Drivers who have won consecutive Daytona 500s. Richard Petty won seven in all, back-to-back -back in 73 and four. Cale Yarbrough, 1983 and four. Sterling Marlin, 1994 and 95. So Denny trying to join a very exclusive list here. He will have lane choice on the restart and will go green white checker. Chris Buescher having moved from Chevrolet over to the Ford camp for 2020 at Roush Fenway Racing lined up in second. Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer, and Ryan Newman the front five. What always impressed me Mike about drivers that just had a knack for this type of racing is as rules change. Right, whether it's the power plant, whether it's the aerodynamics, uh, uh, a body style, that they can continue to have, uh, you know, th that way, almost like a vision, where they could either avoid wrecks or find out how to get the, the the momentum, get the push, make the passes, and it just seems like Denny Hamlin is one of those guys. Quite a bit of fluid on the back straightaway from radiators, oil coolers, as. Everybody got jumbled around there, so speedy dry put down. The jet dryers trying to make as quick a work of that as possible. And now the field is rolling and pit road will be open. Before we have NASCAR overtime, that's a Bubba Wallace below the line in the 43. Looking for pit road, Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, and Austin Dillon. All those Chevys coming to pit road. Kyle Larson, 20 races in the offseason. He's raced all around the world and won half of them, including the Chili Bowl. Big check off there. There's a bunch of just incredibly talented race car drivers that come to NASCAR. And we get the privilege of days like today, watch these guys, the best of the best, out here in a stock car on a two and a half mile high bank. Super Speedway Daytona's fun to watch, and boy, they're going to have to get every bit of that talent out of these race cars and out of themselves in these final laps. And some interesting dark horses in that top 10. Michael McDowell's been good on Super Speedways. Uh, Justin Haley had to race his way into the Daytona 500 on Thursday. A winner here previously. He's in ninth. Rookie John Hunter Nemechek, second generation driver starting his rookie season for Front Row Motorsports. There he is in 10th, the number 38. Big rookie class, the biggest I can remember in years. Six drivers, including the top three from last year's Xfinity Series to campaign the entire 2020 season in NASCAR Cup racing. And it's kind of been an up and down day for those rookies. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek in 10th. Brennan Poole, who got the uh, free pass way back at lap 130 in 13th. Christopher Bell and Tyler Reddick all on the lead lap. 
Cole Custer and Quinn Hauf out of the race. There's Brennan Poole. And Christopher Bell's got issues. A lot of right front damage there. And after that big hit, boy, they have patched up Joey Logano's Penske Mustang. Well, anything, you, you know, at this point, it's all about getting points. <laughs> this thing looks like a modified car, not a <laughs> stock car. Well, that it does. You know, Mike, I so badly want to say it's still anybody's race, but Denny Hamlin has been so impressive the way he's been able, to, when he loses the lead, to get it back. But he does have one guy that is behind him. I mean, Newman's still not out of this thing. Neither is Boyer. But there's one guy that's just stood out to me that, that when it comes down to the final laps of the race, finds a little bit ex something extra. He's won this race before, and that's Kevin Harvick, who's going to be probably starting behind Hamlin if Hamlin chooses that inside lane. And since long before you've joined our Fox coverage, we have called Kevin Harvick the closer. No matter how competitive he may or may not be in the first half, first three quarters of a race, kind of like David Pearson, you get to the final laps, and there he is in contention for the win. And don't count out Chris Buescher in that front row, too, because if Hamlin chooses that inside lane, Buescher's going to have his teammate Ryan Newman lined up behind him. And Hamlin has no friends at the front. None. By that, I mean he's the only Toyota in a sea of Fords. The first Camaro is uh, Justin Haley in eighth place. Uh, yeah, but not only that, not only is he the lone Toyota, those other drivers, you've got maybe somebody like Chris Buescher wants to win his first Daytona 500, but you got those veterans behind him going, I don't want to see Denny Hamlin win another Daytona 500. He had it last year. I want it this year. So in overtime, we go green, white, checker. It's a two lap shootout. And if the leader takes the white flag under the green, the next flag, yellow or checker, will end the race. And NASCAR says we'll take as many tries as it takes. Well, and it might take a few. <laughs> Here's a little radio from the always entertaining Clint Boyer and company. Is it going up scoring, Luke? John, was I ahead of him when the lights come on? Yeah, you were, but they go back to the last scoring loop, and it must be pretty far away from where the yellows came out. Damn it! It's going to be okay. We're going to we'll be fine here. Just stay focused. we got a fast car. we got a lot of Fords around us. We'll be fine. So what Boyer's upset about is which lane he will have to restart in based on his current position. Yeah, I think he, maybe he felt like he was ahead of Newman, would have been in that outside lane. And, and what they do on the last lap coming to the line, They'll use a camera to determine those positions. But before that, they're going to use the previous loop uh, that, that NASCAR has timing and scoring on. And so sometimes it will go back several feet. And the reason they do that is to set the restart order. They use the last timing loop you crossed so that nobody, when the caution comes out, has to gas it to try to establish their position. It's already been set by the time the caution light comes on. So, Larry, lane choice on the outside for Hamlin. Are you surprised at all? No, I'm not. In fact, that's the discussion Jamie McMurray and I were having when you were trying to get a hold of me a while ago. If Hamlin lined up on the inside, that puts those two Roush Fenway Ford teammates bumper to bumper on the outside. I think he had to choose the outside to break up those two teammates. Well, Larry, if I'm Ryan Newman, I want payback on Denny Hamlin. I want to lock bumpers. I want to push him all the way around to the white flag. And when we come off a of turn four in that final lap, I hope that I get to make the same move that Hamlin made. Kevin Harvick led four laps in his Daytona 500 win in, what, 2007? He won with a last lap pass in overtime. <laughs> oh, here we go. Green, white, checker. Uh, 
We're coming to overtime, sponsored by Credit One Bank. 18 lead lap cars trying to win the Daytona 500. Green flag. Oh, cars got loose. Spun some tires. Contact. Is that Boyer? And McDowell. Oh, man. And caution's out. We'll try it again. Boy, he was already upset about starting in that row. He would have been out of that had he been one row early, uh, further up. And he has damage on the right front, and Justin Haley has like, had contact. Yeah, it looked like somebody spun a tire, then I thought Haley maybe went to the outside. So here's Clint Boyer. The 12 comes up to the rear bumper, the six. Oh, actually, maybe it was Boyer had some contact from behind from the 34 of McDowell. Sent him up into Haley, actually. I knew they made contact. I wasn't sure where that contact came from. Ooh, we saw this the other night in the uh, in one of the duels. Same, or was that the, maybe it's the clash, but one of the similar things where they came to the line and spun the tires with a little bit of contact. Ryan Newman, that was Ryan Newman spinning the tires and William Byron, and they both spun off track as they tried to accelerate under the green flag on worn tires. Now there's a uh, well, good bit of damage there left rear, and Christopher Bell continues <laughs> to have issues. Yeah, Boyer's not out of this. Neither, neither is Michael McDowell. I think, you know, the contact that was made there, I think they can fix it, just whether or not they're going to have any kind of track position to still win this race. So these laps are counted under caution. But the completion of the race will come with another try at green-white checker until we get it right. Counting Bell, still 18 cars on the lead lap. Capable of winning this as Boyer comes to pit road after doing a bit of agricultural racing here. Next on Fox, 911 Lone Star, followed by Prodigal Son. All new episodes tonight. Here's another view from the Goodyear blimp of that restart. Watch the 34 McDowell. With a bump to Boyer, who turns into Haley. I, I, again, similar to what we saw in the clash, I, I'm just not so sure that, that that was necessarily caused by McDowell's contact. I mean, it was so slight. I'm just wondering if, if the slightest amount of contact happened right as Boyer spun the tires a little bit. Boyer and Haley continue after damage repair. And we listened in on Michael McDowell and company. I'm not sure what he did there. But he was spinning out. I tried to get away from him on the inside there. Clobbered me. Well, that's Michael McDowell, you know, basically saying he doesn't feel like he made contact that sent Clint Boyer around. Boyer owns a good sized farm in the Triad area of North Carolina, so. <laughs> I don't think it's a sod farm, though, nope. is it, Mike? No, it's not. <laughs> So we'll try again with McDowell, Boyer, and Haley at the back of the field. And that will move up Ryan Blaney to fourth, Kevin Harvick now fifth, and Corey LaJoy to sixth place. Wow. LaJoy, third generation driver whose granddad gave the command to start one of the dual races on Thursday night. Gave a great speech at the Hall of Fame and brought with him a letter. He sure did, brought a letter. He thought that he might come across Rick Hendrick knowing that Jimmy Johnson's gonna be retiring and they might be looking for a driver to fill that seat. Handed him a letter uh, to Rick Hendrick. Actually saw him backstage at the Hall of Fame as he was finishing up um, his presentation and just happened to see Rick Hendrick one-on-one -on -one behind the, the stage and handed him that letter and said, sir, I don't know if I'm what you're looking for, but I'd like for you to read this letter. I, I just thought, you know, to me, that spoke volumes about Corey LaJoy and his passion for this sport. And I haven't talked to Rick Hendrick about it, but I guarantee you that meant a lot to Rick. As I've long told my kids, if you don't ask, 
The answer is always no. Boyer back in for a few more repairs, trying to make that Mustang a little more aerodynamic as he comes back up. Boy, thanks to all of our Fox TV crew that's with us all year long on the NASCAR trail from February to June. Most of them were at the Super Bowl two weeks ago, and all of them have been here since last Saturday, bringing you just great pictures and close-ups. And the replays have just been incredible. They just give you in just incredible looks at the action unfolding like this. And as we said earlier, most of our crew hasn't been home since before the Super Bowl, uh, three and a half weeks now. And tomorrow, they're all headed for Las Vegas to set up and get us up and running for next weekend's race. And remember that torrential downpour we had last night. Yep. I saw a lot of those guys completely saturated because they were out in the elements. Las Vegas next week, then California, then Phoenix. Then we come back to the East Coast in Atlanta for the 2020 NASCAR Cup season as they chase the Bill France Cup. What do you say, Mike? We're going to try this again? Same song, second <laughs> verse. Is it second or third verse? Well, second overtime. Yeah. So we're headed west. The Fox trucks and all the haulers are load up for Las Vegas Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern time on Fox. Then California Speedway in Fontana. Same time one week later, and then on to Phoenix. All at 3 p.m. Eastern time and all on the Fox network. You see up front here, a little bit different shakeup in the lineup because of what happened on that restart. Now Newman, what was he, in fourth position, I believe. Now he goes to second. See Chris Busher gets shuffled back. When that caution came out, that inside row must have been shuffled back, and you see Kevin Harvick all the way back there in fifth now. Now here's Ryan Blaney is who... Uh, Denny Hamlin has chosen to line up behind him and hopefully push him along the way. I don't like the chances of the Roush Fenway team, Ryan Newman with his new teammate, Chris Busher, who'd been away for a couple of seasons on loan to JTG Doherty Racing, and now back in the Roush fold, and there they are on the inside, first two rows. Well, and that's what we found is interesting. The last time Denny Hamlin chose to split those two up, this time he's going to let them line up. It'll be lap 207, the longest Daytona 500 ever. The only Toyota in the top 15 is Hamlin. He is followed by seven Fords and then six Chevrolets led by rookie Brennan Poole and Kyle Larson. One more time for green, white, checker. See Denny Hamlin's hand out the window. He's gonna signal to Ryan Blaney when he wants to go. There he goes. Look at those eyes on Denny Hamlin looking in his mirror. What's Ryan Blaney going to do? Right now he does want him to lock on to him. They get separated a little bit on the back straightaway. Through the speedy drive, Busher not able to be of much help to Newman. Can't get close enough to push him. Now what? Denny's got to be careful getting too far out there and letting a big run come. And now as long as they're side by side, he's good. But here comes Newman. Big run. Denny put the block on him. Great job not causing a wreck on that block. White flag under green. Next flag will end the race, and Newman is there. Newman's gotten locked onto his rear bumper just like he did. Oh, wrecking behind Chase Elliott around. Spinning around. No still green. green. Still green. Still green, and here they come. And here comes Blaney. Ryan Blaney up behind Ryan Newman no trying to get him to Hamlin. Newman backed up to Blaney. Big run coming here. To no. the inside, Newman to the front. Nothing Denny Hamlin could do. What can Ryan Blaney now do? Here comes a push from Denny Hamlin. Oh, this thing's not over yet. Not at all. 
Ryan Newman off turn four for the final time. Blaney to the outside, oh. to the inside. Here comes Hamlin up the outside. Wow. Crash into the wall, into the air, goes oh. Newman. Upside down. In a shower of sparks on his roof, Ryan Newman comes across the line, fourth. And comes to rest. Scoring, unofficial between Hamlin and Blaney as far as who crossed the finish line first. Newman got turned, went up in the air as he came down, was hit by another car and launched skyward, coming down on his roof. The AMR safety team is there quickly to attend to Ryan Newman. A fist pump from Denny Hamlin, who has won the Daytona 500 for the second year in a row. And the third time overall. Coach Gibbs leads his team in prayer. Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, too close to call. Our scoring monitor gives us interval to one one hundredth of a second. It was closer than that. Denny Hamlin has now won three of the last five Daytona 500s. Goes to third on the all-time list. Third win at Daytona in his 29th start. And the fourth Daytona 500 win for Joe Gibbs Racing. Yes, sir! Unofficially, the second closest 500 finish in history. Both of which won by Denny Hamlin, side by side over Martin Truex, and here against Ryan Blaney. Good job, brother. Thank you, man. Awesome. Denny Hamlin and Joe Gibbs racing awesome job, awesome jubilant job, as the biggest single day prize in stock car racing is theirs yet again. And Denny Hamlin will head for victory lane we will update the situation on Ryan Newman when we come back.
A hushed crowd in Daytona stands awaiting word, as are we, on the condition of Ryan Newman uh, being assisted by the AMR safety team. who are going to remove him from the car and he's going to be taken directly to a local hospital. Here is a look at the last lap. Denny Hamlin out in front of Newman and Ryan Blaney. Yeah, Ryan Blaney gets to his rear bumper. Nothing that Denny Hamlin can do other than try to tuck right into the rear bumper of Ryan Blaney, which he does an excellent job of. Newman gets a pretty good run to the turn four, but now here comes a huge run by Ryan Blaney being pushed by Denny Hamlin. He goes, tries to go to the outside, then the inside. They lock, lock bumpers and turns Ryan Newman around. Upside down he goes. Corey LaJoy coming along, making contact. Yeah, just lifting Newman's car up and over. And it comes to rest on its roof. Here is the second closest finish in Daytona 500 history. Denny Hamlin, the winner in both of them. This time, it is Ryan Blaney finishing second. Blaney tried the top side, tried to get low. Ryan Newman goes around, and the car goes to its roof, and here's the on-rushing Corey LaJoy picking it up and over. We'll uh, give you further updates on Ryan Newman as they become available to us as uh, they're working now on helping him out of the car. Denny Hamlin and his crew, though, have reason to celebrate in Daytona. Here's Jamie Little. Well, there, there is a little celebration, but it is a subdued victory lane right now. Denny, as a race car driver in these moments, the highs, the lows, how do you describe this style of racing, the adrenaline and the bravery that it takes? Yeah, I mean, I think we take for granted sometimes um, you know, how safe the cars are. Uh, but, you know, number one, we, we, we're, we're praying for Ryan. Um, uh, worked really well with Ryan through the through this whole race. And, um, you know, obviously he, he got turned right there. But uh, proud of our whole FedEx team. Um, I, I don't even know what to say. It's so unexpected. I mean, I you know, I knew they were going to come with a big run there. Um, my job was to just make sure I didn't put a block that was going to wreck me. Uh, lived to race another corner. Uh, we got to the 12s bumper, got to pushing them there. And I knew I was going to give him a big run uh, and it was going to uh, the race wasn't over <laughs> and uh, and obviously it worked out well for us there at the end but uh, proud of this whole FedEx team uh, Toyota Coke uh, the Jordan brand little big burger um, you know great to have my girls here uh, great to have the team celebrating uh, you know back to back uh, I can't even tell you what it means to me Denny, it doesn't matter what crew chief you have or what rules package or what year it is, three times now, what is it about you and this style of racing in Daytona? Yeah, I mean, you know, I just feel like uh, I'm, a, I'm a student to the game. I, I never stop learning and, you know, trying to figure out, you know, where I need to put myself at the right time. And uh, it doesn't always work. I mean, I, the odds have definitely, uh, we've defied odds here in the last uh, eight years or so in the Daytona 500. But, uh, you know, I just trust my instincts, and, and so far they've been good for me. So um, I just I can't do it without the, the car that's m m making it capable for me to make those race-winning moves. Congratulations on your back-to-back 500s. Thank you. Matt?